Good morning, you beauties. Welcome to a brand new day, a brand new week. And of course, your family is ready to help you kickstart that Monday right here on Express. So thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, my Good morning. Friends. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Oh, just beautiful, oh. man. Absolutely beautiful. Restorative, oh. I'm going to call it. Yeah. Well, congratulations to all the two Oceans Marathon Big runners, one. whether you did the Ultra or the 21. I'm pretty sure the legs are feeling fresh today. But if that is the case, <laughs> we've got a soothing start to your Monday. We're going to have the sounds of Elsie's River High School Band bringing us a symphony of talent that is sure to make sure your week starts off on a rocking start. Yeah, those Mondays are all about exploring and highlighting, giving a platform to amazing young talent. And then we're going to get to know, speaking of which, an incredible content creator, Akila Suleiman. She's here to give us the lowdown on all things entertainment from the hottest got uh, gossip to the latest trends that we need to be plugging into. She will provide the energy that we need to launch into the brand new week. Oh, but it's not just all about entertainment today. We are also putting the spotlight on the brilliant minds of Stellenbosch University students who are using cutting-edge technology to raise awareness about organ brilliant. donation. Now, it's innovation meeting altruism, and we can't wait to dive into their groundbreaking work. Purpose, purpose, purpose. I'm all about that. And then on Monday, we have some delicious eats, and we are going to be tantalizing those taste buds today. In the kitchen, we are whipping up oh, pretty much a storm. There is a lot going on. Some mouth-watering tomato, basil, Ooh. cream sauce pasta, and Detroit-style focaccia. I don't know what that means, Detroit-style <laughs> focaccia. It's, is it square? You went a bit yeah, intense there. I know, but when it's got a name, it must have a, a reason. So we'll find out Jenny Morris, uh, who is the queen of all things bread. She knows how to knead the dough. She is here to knead us into shape to start the brand new week. But it is going to be a fantastic and hopefully a fully engaged show, and we need to engage with you. So let's uh, broaden our circle just a little bit this morning and put this out to you. I want to hear from you this morning. What positive impacts of AI have you noticed in your daily life or work? Think about that for a second. Maybe it's happening and you're not even aware of it. But the stuff that you have taken notice of in the surge of AI over the last few months, where do you see it really helping? I can certainly, when we speak about science and what they can do in medicine for social development in those sorts of spaces, wow, the shackles have been removed and AI is a big part of that, but we want to hear from you. 063-408-8863. That's the line to use if you want to drop us a voice note about anything, even the football. We'll talk about it this morning, um, or you can hit us up on our socials. But let's give you a few more talking points to kickstart your day officially. Get those news and sporting headlines in. Thanks, G. Let's start off with your national headlines. The trial of multi-million rand asbestos roof removal scandal. It starts in the Free State High Court today. 18 accused are facing more than 70 counts of corruption and money laundering. This relates to the alleged irregular awarding of 255 million rand asbestos roof removal contracts in the Free State in October 2014. The accused include the former Premier of the Free State, Ace Mahashule, and businessman Edwin Sodi. The state alleges that between June 2015 and January 2016, Mahashule either received or benefited from unlawful payments of more than 1 million rand. And staying with our local news, the police in Kuruman in the Northern Cape have arrested three Zimbabwean citizens after they were caught with a pangolin in their possession. A police spokesperson, Timothy Sam, said officers had acted on a tip-off. A pangolin is an endangered species with a street value of more than 700,000 rand. Sam says the men have been charged for breaching the National Environment, Environmental Management Act. The police also seized their vehicle. We move to news abroad. A bipartisan group of senators will introduce a bill to renew the United States' trade pact with sub-Saharan Africa ahead of its expiration next year. The bill was introduced by Senators Chris Coons, a Democrat, and James Risch, the top Republican of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. An aide to Coons said it was a high priority to reauthorize the African Growth and Opportunity Act known as AGOA this year. The bill would renew AGOA for 16 years to 2041 and help countries implement strategies to take advantage of the program. And Iran yesterday urged Israel not to retaliate military to an unprecedented attack on Saturday night, which Tehran presented as justified response to the strike that destroyed its consulate building in Damascus. 
This, the matter can be deemed concluded. Iran's mission to the UN said in a post on X just a few hours after the start of the operation. However, the Iranian mission warned that should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response would be considerably more severe. This was the first time Iran had launched a direct military assault on Israel. And amidst Taiwan's recent earthquake aftermath, Roger, an eight-year-old Labrador, stole the spotlight as a heroic rescuer, winning hearts nationwide. Roger was once a police, dog's, a police drug sniffing dog, but lost his job due to being overly friendly. His love for fun, food and people often diverted his attention and hindered his responsiveness to his handler's instructions. But his personality and intelligence made him a much better candidate to be a rescue dog and he's proved his worth. The quake's magnitude of 7.4 highlighted dogs such as Roger in navigation, navigating chaos for rescues. His rubble pile search and rescue skills proved vital, culminating in a heartwarming rescue near the national park. Roger's tale indeed proves that each dog has its day. Well, that is where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take a first look at your sport with Graham. Thank you, Summit. So let's start with a crazy weekend of football. And in the Premier League, Arsenal's dreams of a Premier League title took a severe hit yesterday as Aston Villa stunned them with two late goals, ensuring a dramatic 2-0 victory at the Emirates. So Mikel Arteta's team, they missed the chance to claim that top spot on the table. Um, and then, of course, conceding it to Man City as um, it seemed that Liverpool also had a disastrous weekend. And that was after their commanding 5-1 win against Luton Town on Saturday. City saw themselves at the summit. Liverpool's pursuit of that Premier League title in Jurgen Klopp's farewell season, suffering that significant setback with their 1 0 defeat at the hands of Crystal Palace at Anfield as well, leaving them now in third place. We won't even talk about Tottenham Hotspur. Now let's uh, hop over the fence just a little bit and get in some more European football. And this is a big one. Bayer Leverkusen made history by clinching their first ever Bundesliga title in their 120 year existence. That is massive. Their commanding five. 5-0 victory over Werder Bremen ended by Munich's 11-year reign at the top of German top flight. And it was a dominant performance that saw Florian Wirtz netting a hat-trick, supported by goals from Victor Boniface and Granit Xhaka, extending their unbeaten streak to an impressive 43 games across all competitions. Certainly have earned it. Leverkusen's long-awaited triumph not only keeps their dream of a remarkable treble alive, but also finally erases the Neverkusen nickname that has haunted them for a very long time. Now let's turn now to marathon running, and she is undoubtedly the best of the best, as Khaira Stein once again has solidified her status as South Africa's long-distance running champion, claiming victory in the 2024 Two Oceans Ultra Marathon in record-breaking fashion. So Stein, who previously conquered the Two Oceans and Comrades uh, double, completed the grueling 56-kilometer route in a remarkable time of three hours, 26 minutes, and 50 four seconds. That's going to take some beating, smashing her own 2023 record of three hours, 29 minutes, zero, six seconds. And this marked Stain's fifth consecutive Two Oceans triumph, making her the first athlete to achieve such a feat. In fact, we let her sleep in this morning just because of that. Incredible. We love you, Gerda. And of course, the men's race going once again to Onalana Konkobe in a time of three hours, nine minutes and 30 seconds. So the lady's not too far behind. Now let's turn to golf and Scotty Scheffler clinched his second Masters title, triumphing in a back nine showdown to secure a four-stroke win at the famed Augusta National. So the victory earned him a record $3.6 million prize purse. That was after a tense battle with Colin Morikawa, Max Homer, and Sweden's Ludwig Eberg, who impressed in his major debut. I mean, what a platform to do it. And then Scheffler, of course, matching the great Tiger Woods, became the only player to win the Masters twice while ranked at world number one. And additionally, at just 27 years old, he became the fourth youngest multiple Masters winner as well, joining the ranks of Woods himself, Jack Nicklaus and Seve Ballesteros. I mean, what a list to be placed on, but I'm sure he's only interested in that green jacket. So an incredible weekend of sport, but that's where we leave it for now. Let's touch on the weather being the start of a brand new week.
And we start with the South African Weather Service that has issued a yellow level 2 warning anticipating severe thunderstorms and potential heavy downpours today. These conditions could trigger flooding, particularly on vulnerable roads, bridges and informal settlements across the southwestern parts of the northwest, the central and western areas of the Free State and the far eastern stretches of the Northern Cape. Meanwhile, a yellow level one advisory has also been issued, signaling disruptive rainfall that may cause localized flooding and property damage in select areas along the picturesque wild coast and its neighboring interior regions. Well, that is your weather update. Remember, you can also share your beautiful sunrise views with us on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's take a look at your temperatures for your Monday. Still hasn't got the memo. It's all right, Uppington, we'll get there, we'll get there. The seasons have changed. Come <laughs> on, man, just join the party. I'll speak at which you could be joining a very big party this morning. Um, your Monday could be the Monday to remember when you play daily lotto for an estimated 460,000 Rand jackpot today. But if you want to make every day feel like a payday, then you actually need to play to put yourself in the running. Luckily for you, there are many ways that you can buy your ticket, including going in store. You can buy your ticket on the nationallottery.co.za a website or the mobile app. You can also purchase your ticket through your cell phone banking or by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Mm, and we'll keep all of those deets up on our social media pages so you can go and check them out. You've got no excuses. Just take a chance that 460,000 Rand in estimated daily lotto jackpots could be yours, but you've got to play now to find out. Definitely. Whatever you do, don't leave your house, though. Don't mm. leave your house. You're probably wondering why is Zoe in her fitness clothing? Why did she not get into her normal clothing. <laughs> She's ready. Well, I am ready for a workout. It's not going to be any workout. It's going to be a towel-based workout. So oh, something wow. you can join in on. Mm, I've heard but put them. clothing on when you join us yeah, Exactly. That. <laughs> not in your towel. Okay, well, if you're alone, you can do whatever you want, I suppose. <laughs> then we're going to introduce you to a phenomenal young talent. Um, she's just a high school student, but doing amazing things in high jump. Michaela was here to give us a window into her incredible world. Look at that happy young face. <laughs> and that's on a Monday morning. Yo, she is motivated, Bill connect with her and you after this. It's my feel-good work the show. 
Welcome back. Thank you so much for keeping it tiled in. Now, I think you know, not just as a parent, but as a sports enthusiast, having seen the power of what sport can do within this country's context, I love seeing up-and-coming talent when it's this good. We're about to chat to Michaela Spockter, a grade 10 learner from Currow Meridian Pinehurst in Durbanville here in Cape Town, which is becoming a, a talent factory. She recently clinched gold in the under-17 high jump category at the South African High School Nationals Track and Field Championships, reaching a height of 1.75 meters, which is right over my head. Michaela's exceptional win speaks volumes about her dedication and determination, establishing her as a formidable athlete in the world of athletics. Good morning and welcome to her and her very proud Papa Bear, who's just been thrown like a rugby ball into the mix. Can we give her a round of applause just for those national... <laughs> Absolute honours. Um, so good to have the two of you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Michaela, I'm going to start with you. Um, it's very early, but I would imagine you're used to early mornings. You're a motivated young person. Um, let's start with the, with the SA Nationals. That is massive. When you work so hard towards something and you know the level of competition and it is really, really high, when you achieve something like that, what's that like? It feels really good. It makes me proud. It makes everyone proud. And I'm happy they're proud of me. And I'm happy that I'm doing something I like. Um, and the passion has to be there if you're going to achieve this. I'm looking at a very proud Papa Bear with you. Um, it's a difficult thing because you want to be out there with your child, driving them, pushing them. Yeah. But she's still a child. She's still uh, enjoying that phase of her life. But when you've got a talent like this, you've got to answer that call. How do you foster this incredible talent? What, what role do you have to play in this, do you think? Look, we support her in as much as we can. We've got a, a personal coach, uh, Nicolette Slubber. And she is amazing with her, and the two of them work and together, and they just get the job done. Yeah. Could you but do your high jump? No. <laughs> I <think laughs> Don't laugh, Michaela. <laughs> I think it's more the mom that is the <laughs> athletic. Yeah. I, I, I was going to ask because it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, in your mind, where does this come from? Is this something like a seed that was just born in you? Where does this come from? I think so. I've always been very interested in sports. I've always been doing it since I was a child. And then since grade four, I've been doing high jump and I just got better and better. So I just kept doing it. Because that's quite a technical yeah. skill set to have. And it's one of those things you either kind of can or you can't. You know, it's not like you can teach mm. them, but when you do see it, athletics requires a lot. What you put in is what you get out. What difference has happened here? Because clearly there is something that's allowing her to to get her nose out in front. What is that difference? When you look at the way Michaela lives her life and trains, what sets her apart? I think the, what makes a difference, God has given her that talent to, to do this uh, sport. She done long jump, uh, 100 meters, but she decided to concentrate on the high jump. So yeah, when she started in grade four, she just kept going higher and higher. And I think that motivates her and she wants to beat that personal best all the time. Yeah. 175, that's, that's something. I mean, that would have gotten coaches across the country going, oh, okay. <laughs> Where do you see this going? Surely when you, when you identify a talent, I know you are very young, very, very young with all due respect, but now you can start connecting those dots. I mean, you can say, okay, well, I can do an Olympics. I can, that's surely what the goal must be. Or is it? What do you want to do? My goal is to go to the Olympics and just beat my personal best and get better and better all the time. How do you do that? How do you keep improving? More practice and just staying fit. Which yeah. makes it sound so easy, <laughs> man. You're going to get to my yeah. age. It's not quite. Maybe we, our list becomes a little bit longer. Uh, but it can be that simple. You've yeah. just got to stay focused and you've got to stay in shape. You've got the small matter of balancing out school as well because this is a foundation phase of life and you've got to do that. <coughs> do you need to be that with Michaela before I ask her this question? Do you have to weigh in and help her keep that balance? Or is that Look, something I, she I does think she naturally? She balances it naturally. She, she focuses on the high jump and she's doing netball, which has just gone through to second round of Western Province. Of course, uh, of trials, course, that's so, must, yeah. Yeah, she, she, I think she works it out herself. Once she comes home, she does homework and on weekends do some extra work, so. Where does that come from? Is that a mantra that you tell yourself? Are you just 
blessed to have that kind of nature or do you have to be quite strict with yourself? Where does the balance come in your, in your mind? I just have to get good marks in order to keep doing the sport. Ah, uh -huh, you see. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Just put that gateway mm. in front of her. So I've got to ask you, because there are a lot of young girls and, and young boys, <laughs> sportsmen out there looking at you, what you are doing, going, wow, okay, I can, I can find another gear. I can take one more step towards achieving greatness, because that's kind of the path you're on now. What advice do you have for those young athletes wanting to follow in your footsteps? Um, don't give up. Just keep pushing. And if things get harder, just keep going. Just keep going. The fortitude. Dude, how proud are you right now, man? Extremely proud. I think, <laughs> yeah. Can't explain it. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to, dude. I'm a girl dad <laughs> as well. I can see it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, what's the next big goal, Makeda? What What's next on the focus? Just keep winning. But the athletic season is done now, and I'm focusing on netball. So next year, again, beat my personal best and just go further. How high do you think you can go? I almost made it over 178. Ooh. But like so much, Ooh. so much higher. So 180 is what you're saying. 185 yes. is what you're saying. 185, 180. <laughs> you've got to put it out there. The record is 2.09, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's not going to take long. <laughs> she is still so young. And again, I say that with all due respect. No, more out of excitement than anything else, because the joy of my job, I'll interview you in five years' time when you've gone on to achieve these amazing things that you're manifesting. We love young talent like this. If you're a, a, an incredibly proud parent like the two of us, if you're a, an athlete, if you're a coach, if you're a teacher, and you've identified a young person like Michaela who's doing amazing things, showing that courage, that fortitude to just push through and achieving amazing things that will inspire us and let us know. Hit us up on the socials. We'd love to connect with as many Michaelas in the world as we can, but we are so proud of you, girl. Keep it up. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, well, listen, we're going to keep on the fitness trajectory because it's all about the mindset. And if you don't have time to get to gym, why not just use a towel? Now, this morning we get fit with a towel workout. And this exercise routine, it uses a towel as a resistance tool, a targeting mul multiple muscles, and also helping you to achieve those fitness goals that you've set out for yourself at the start of the year. Now, here to take us through the towel workout is fitness trainer Dale Hendricks from DDJ Training, loving the team shirts yes we are nice and bright <laughs> thank you for having us we are always happy to be on the show as you said we are trying to to make fitness fun and accessible to everyone these days so today we will use the towel as a resistance tool so i've prepared about six exercises for everyone to to try at home so yeah let's get into it i love that we team. are using everyday household items to show that you don't need to end up at a gym to be able to do a, a workout Exactly. So, yeah, anywhere, any place, we can do a workout. So, here we go. So, all we need to do is just put some resistance on the, on the towel at all times, right? And now we're going to do some reverse lunges. As we go back, we're just lifting up the towel. So, there we go. We're alternating the legs. Alternating, keeping the back straight, pushing the chest out. And we're pulling the towel on the side. So, there we go. Lovely stuff. So, we're going for five. Four, three, keep pulling a towel, two, and one. And always we're doing active rest. Okay, we're moving on. So we're starting with some cardio and then we're working our way to upper body and then some core. So pulling a towel, we're gonna open those legs. Okay, back straight, chest out. And as we go down to the squat, towel goes behind the head. So we're going down, up, and put it up there. Down, breathe in, exhale, mouth. Here we go. Don't lean over, we're keeping that back straight, chest out, okay. Breathe in and exhale. Keep pulling a towel, feeling, start feeling those arms starting to work with those legs. So let's go for another three, two, and one. Lovely stuff, and we're going with an active race. Next one, we're just going for three by three, so we're going three on this side, and then we're going three on the other side. So, so we're just going up. As we lift the knee, we tap our knee with the arms. There we go, one, two, three. Now we turn the other side. One, pull the towel, and three. Now we change it, we change it. Remember, it's a three by three, right? So we're going one, two, three, and we turn again. One, two, three. Let's go for one more on the other side. Last one. One, two, and three. Well done. 
Go this for actually gets the arms going over. My arms are getting tired. Gets the arms because <laughs> we're pulling at all times. They're pulling at resistance. For the next few, we're going down. We don't have match, but we're still going down. Remember, we're doing it anywhere. Okay, so we're going with some Russian twist. Sticking to the same technique by pulling. We're going to cross the legs, lift it, and we're just twisting to the side. If you can't keep your legs up, feel free to drop it, lean back. Okay, keep pulling it down, don't let go. Okay, so we're doing it with our legs down, ladies at the back, lifting it up. Let's go for five, four, three, two, and one. Take a few seconds. Okay, remember when you're in the gym, uh, we're using the a bench press, right? We're using the pole, we're using the bars. Now we're using a towel, so we're going up, in front, up, at the back. Up. Uh, you see? Okay. <laughs> Let's go for it. One, back, front, keep pulling that towel, back, front. Can we feel the arms burning? Yes. Back. Core working as well, eh? Definitely. And back. <laughs> Lovely stuff. There we go. Let's give five, four, three, two, and one. And relax. We're still good? Yes, we are we're still, still good. good. We have a few more to go, so keeping it above the head, remember we're always pulling that towel. So we're going for some one by ones and we're bringing those knees. Try and get your knee to churn, tighten up that core, keep pulling the towel, okay? In, out. Here we go. So we're working the core, we're working those arms. I love, I can feel the heart rate racing. I'm starting to sweat. Yeah. The muscles are burning. It's burning. Just nice. because we're using a towel does not mean we're not getting results. Exactly. Okay. And we can wipe off the sweat yes. whenever, we, <laughs> whenever we're sweating, you know? So, um, can we squeeze in one few more? Let's squeeze one more in. One more, let's go for it. Still with the same technique. Okay, we're gonna go for some flatness. So we're kicking up while holding towel up. So if you can't hold the legs up, just give it like that. Little, little, little gentle One by kick. one, tap those heels. And if you can, we're gonna lift it up. And do a little flutter. And do a little flutter. <laughs> With your towel above your head. Here we go, five, four, three, two, and one. Here we go. Here we go. Dale, this was amazing. I love that you are creative. You always come to set to studio with interesting workouts using everyday household items just to show that you don't always have to feel like you need to be in a gym to be able to get a workout out. Exactly. We need to make it fun. We need to be excited to be exercising. So. You know, that was so impressive. I'm literally on bended knee, guys. Aww. Bended knee. Bring, you know, the, the truth you. is, yeah, Dale, I'm so terrible at drinking Tropico. You, you get the honor this morning, guys. Well done. That was Thank a brilliant you. workout. There we Good go. G-Man, you must bring for the other ladies too. I'm just saying. <laughs> Terrible host. <laughs> ah, thank you. Matches with the outfit. Here we go. Here we go. Matches.
Welcome back. Time to be inspired. When we speak about young, inspirational South Africans, it's getting difficult to look in any direction and not find them at the moment. And there is a reason why. When we look at those drivers like youth unemployment, it is a crisis at the moment, a pressing concern. But amidst this challenge, a wave of entrepreneurial spirit is rising. It's thriving. Companies like Empower Youth, alongside key stakeholders, are empowering thousands to become the future of our economy. Let's leave sustainability behind and move towards Thrive. And Dumasile LaRue, she embodies this. She's the head of Empower Youth, and she is in studio to talk about their upcoming Empower Youth Week, which sounds amazing. Dumasile, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you for having me. Um, uh, this is what we are designed for. Our purpose is to provide a platform for purpose-driven young South Africans. Simple as that. Love and it. Clearly, you got the purpose, okay? Um, <laughs> because there is a need. Yeah, absolutely. When we talk about unemployment, I often feel like we're not connecting the dots. So much unemployment, so much work needs to be done. Why are we not connecting those two endeavors? In your mind, where do we sit when it comes to youth unemployment? Sure. Um, I think really where we are as a, as a country, um, it's not a favourable position. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a huge crisis on our hands and it's really pressing, requires urgent intervention, which is youth unemployment. Um, you've got young people that are trapped in a cycle of poverty and frustration due to not finding opportunity, whether it be employment, whether it be um, entrepreneurial de development, you know, just support learning, of the mentoring, ecosystem, yeah. learning. You know, those challenges continue to, um, you know, face young people and what we find is that now there's a ripple effect into um, our society where we've got young people that are obviously now feeling, you know, frustrated. Um, it contributes to crime, contributes to social unrest. Um, it also contributes then to the inequality that lies in our society today. And I think the addressing of youth unemployment and the needs of our young people is going to be quite important in shifting um, our social, um, you know, development as well as um, the economy at large. Um, we'll, be con we'll continue as a country to be held at gunpoint when it comes to the growth of our economy if we don't address this challenge of youth unemployment. We need to create our market. <laughs> We've Absolutely. got to keep investing in the market Absolutely. if we want the market to keep paying money out. Absolutely. Simple as that. <laughs> um, there are answers staring us right in the face and I have a feeling it's not going to be coming from a political standpoint yeah. from a, a generation that has already moved out of this youth zone it needs to come from the young people who are going to take I suppose custodianship of this journey yeah how are you as empower youth helping to connect these dots sure I think um, Empower Youth is really a progressive platform and I must tell you that it's a product of Empower Works. So our day-to-day -day job is actually, uh, you know, marketing, a strategy, comms and events. But over f eight years ago, uh, we developed this beautiful platform that speaks to developing young people and, you know, providing real-time sustainable opportunities that will allow a young person to unlock their potential. And what we've done is we've expanded this platform to say young people in industry come into one platform, engage with one another Let's find out what, are, what exactly we're grappling with when it comes to um, youth being able to grab a hold of opportunity in the industry and what are you as industry looking for from a young person for them to potentially take up spaces within, uh, you know, your different organizations. So we really connect these young people with industry, allowing them to unleash and unlock potential. And I think EmpowerWorks is really an impact-driven um, organization sure. where we focus on youth. We focus on um, empowering entrepreneurs through our Empower Entrepreneurs platform we've got empower men empower women um, and these entrepreneurial um, you know uh, you know uh, platforms that allow humans to be developed then allow us to be able to unlock um, a better future specifically for youth in this discussion completely if, if you want to know what young people need ask them <laughs> if you want to know what employers need Ask, ask them, them. <laughs> speak to them directly. I don't know why we, we kind of, or maybe because we are so self-serving very often in our industry, but yeah. to hear someone from the marketing space talk about impact mm. beyond just metrics that you can measure online, Absolutely. impact is people, impact yeah. is, is jobs being created, yeah. economies being yep. created in that sense. Transformation. 
how are you getting it right? If, to keep it going for this long, to feed so much into it, clearly there are some success stories. Shine a light on, on what's really oh, got you inspired. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been uh, graced enough with the opportunity to, you know, travel our country. Uh, we've been to seven of our nine provinces, impacting the lives of young people sustainably. Um, we've been able to impact over 60,000 youth across wow. South Africa. Well so this done. speaks to employment opportunity. Um, we really believe in entrepreneurial development. I mean, if we look at um, the NDP's goal to have at least, um, you know, a specific amount of jobs that are created between now and 2030. Uh, we've got to focus on developing entrepreneurs, especially in the township area, and that's where we. It's a localized on. economy. It's yeah. a localized economy, and that's where Empower Works is actually based. Um, Empower Youth focuses on developing township economies, uh, which will then create jobs uh, for the youth that are despondent within those various communities. So we we are then able to do this, um, and uh, some of our stories, you know, through, lie through some of our partners, such as Coca-Cola Beverages. South Africa that comes in and commits 500,000 worth of infrastructural support for young SMMEs. Um, we'll also look at your WNR CETAs, another partner of ours that also comes in and says, how can we support you from, you know, an, a skills development and funding perspective? I mean, we need to understand the entire ecosystem of developing an entrepreneur doesn't only lie in funds, it lies in skills development, it lies in knowledge and many other aspects Completely. that we as Empower Youth then focus on. Well, I think these big brands, they know what's good for them. Absolutely. Um, and essentially, I hate to say it, but you're doing their job for <laughs> them by feeding into their markets. Yeah. Um, and I think for far too long, we used to look at this section when we talk about those, those localized, informal economies, if you yeah. will, within the townships as being the one cents market. Absolutely. But if someone's buying a million one cents, they're no longer a one cents market. There are gogos, there are entrepreneurs, there are Absolutely. cash and carry. Um, there, are, there are elements of business being done there better than anywhere else in the world because they've hacked to to get it right i absolutely love that so you bring people together there's mentoring going on there's this beautiful network being created you've got a week of this happening what a plug-in tell us more about your event all right, so we've got an amazing Val Empower Youth Week that's coming up. That's in the Val area in Sidibing. And thank you so much to the Sidibing District, District Municipality for the support well done, um, yeah. that they're actually giving us and making sure that this event comes to life, targeting 10,000 young people. We're looking Brilliant. at 12 different industry stages where young people are exposed to relevant information um, around these different sectors. So we've got transport, entrepreneurship. Um, we focus on 4IR. We do health and wellness, you know, sports, arts, culture. These are some of the, the you know, the industry that we unpack for the right. course of the week. You've got to register to attend, though. It's a registration-based event. Um, so any young person that's looking to attend can certainly reach out to us on our website. We're available on social media at Empower Youth. So you spell it very fancy as well, I must say. <laughs> so it's E-M-P-O-W-A Youth. Okay. Um, .co .za One for the word, website. baby. Empower Youth. <laughs> Empower Youth. Boom. Uh, we're also available on social media platforms, um, all of them, and it's at Empower Youth. So you've got to register to attend. No registration. There is no entry. We're always oversubscribed, and I think our reputation precedes us, and mm. it's really about impact, growing, and transforming the lives of young people, um, and that's why we end up being oversubscribed, because young people know that Empower Youth is not a talk and talk. You get there. Yeah. The sustainable, real-time opportunities. It's provided. a network. It's it's a strategic Absolutely. network, and I think as you progress in business, you understand that's why you need your mentor, is to yeah. connect you to your network. And you are doing that on just a different scale. I love you, girl. <laughs> <Thank Woo -wee>. you. <laughs> the fires are burning inside <laughs> us today, and that's what we are here for, empowering young people to change their own future. Stop waiting for someone to do it for you. If you're feeling despondent, go and grab it for yourself. We are not letting you go anywhere. I want to <laughs> plug into this for a little bit longer to see that representing Empower Youth, an incredible organization and an opportunity for you to plug into and make this your tribe, your people. Just take that step, empoweryouth.co.za. Well, we still have a lot of exciting things coming up on your Feel Good Breakfast show, including connecting with you on social media. Now, this morning, we're having some fun and we're asking you, what positive impacts of AI have you noticed in your daily life or work? You can share it with us by commenting on our posts or sending us a voice note on 063-408-8863. And Teresa said, good morning, my favorite beautiful Espresso family. Happy New Week and thank you for the amazing morning show. Oh, well, thank you for that. Let's see if we've got any other comments. Toko Zani says, good morning, happy Monday. Can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Okay, so no one's answering our question today. We are asking you, have you made use of AI in your space of work or your private life? We also have says, 
Tuli, good morning, Express. So definitely the chatbot. Okay, that often helps if you need to, you know, get some some answers. They always help. Gary Ocamp says they should incorporate AI into traffic lights. Let's see. Sometimes I'm driving down and down a road with five or six lights, and everyone catches me two seconds before I reach it. I just want to floor it, but I'm glad you don't, Gary. So thank you for that. Well, there we go. Those are some of the comments that's come through. If you would love to be part of this conversation, send us a voice note on number 063-408-8863. I will tell you this, how I have noticed how AI has helped me. You know, when you're looking for something specific and your phone hears you talk about it. So let's say I'm looking for storage containers. I love it when all the ads pop up, giving me all the storage containers. It takes the searching out for me. So that's kind of how I've been enjoying it but why don't you let us know how you've been enjoying it well we are taking a quick break on your feel good breakfast show when we get back we're going to continue about the empower youth event taking place with Graham and then we have Jenny Morris in the kitchen and she's ready to whip up a delicious focaccia just look at that oh well we will see you in just a bit I'll just oh, you can make my day. Feel good Welcome back. We and I think you can see how inspired I am this morning. That's a reason we are back with the incredible Tubasile Lavru, the head of Empower Youth. To learn more about the upcoming Empower Youth Week happening in the Vol, a dynamic platform dedicated to empowering and uplifting young South Africans by providing real opportunities for personal and professional growth. And I'm underselling it completely. So I think maybe I'm going to let you do the selling because you. clearly you are primed for that. And um, in a nutshell, um, you've spoken about some of the activities that are going to be happening in the ball over this incredible week, um, plugging into different um, uh, sectors, things, different yeah. industries, opportunity to meet mentors. What would you say the real opportunity as a young South African, when you see a plug-in like this, what do you think the real opportunity here is to come to this, this event? Sure, I think um, our tagline goes inspired, connected, transformed. I love and that. And that's exactly where the opportunity lies. You stand um, for the opportunity to be inspired um, through ideas, through knowledge around the different sectors that we unpack uh, for the duration of the week you stand um, an opportunity to be connected. I think for us, um, it's all about connecting young people to their future. So we connect you with industry that you require um, in order to be able to tap into the next opportunity that they can provide. So that'd be an employment opportunity, mentorship, um, you know, skills development or training opportunity. That's the connection that we really provide you real time during that particular week. And transformation, again, that's inevitable once you've been connected um, to yeah, somebody. Yeah, and no going back. There's yeah. no going back so transformation is definitely um, the latter opportunity as I'm hearing you say this and, and I mean this in all the right kind of ways it almost doesn't matter what that first step is because in our line I have the, the value of retrospect here where I get to see transformations happen I get to see the first step and I get to see the mountain being summited yeah it's just the first step. So yeah. whether you're getting a mentor, whether you're getting a new skill, once you've unlocked that first thing and you see yourself as being more than, 
that's when the magic starts Absolutely. to happen. So that being said, because clearly you are more than right now. <laughs> you, you've been able to embrace this. You, are, you yourself are living with purpose within a very big organization representing a big industry. You've got this right. What advice do you have for young people wanting to look for meaningful employment or going out there to start their own venture, mm. become an entrepreneur? What advice do you have for them? Sure. Um, I think I'll speak to three pillars quickly um, that you've got to embody um, as a young person for you to unlock a future as an entrepreneur or in the world in the world of work. I'll speak to consistency. Mm -hmm. I'll speak to lifelong learning. I'll speak to um, uh, perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got to be consistent in the sense that, uh, you know, you're actively showing up for yourself. You know, being acclimatized with what's happening around you. Platforms such as um, empower youth, empower entrepreneurs, empower men, empower women, empower women allow you to be exposed to opportunities to know, that lie for you. Yeah. Um, it allows you to network. And through networking, you connect yourself to the next person that can give you a plug into your future. So um, you've also got to persevere in the sense that, you know, failure and challenges are inevitable. You can't run away from them. 100%. But however, they develop you and they grow you and they groom you into becoming a better entrepreneur or a better young person that's then well-groomed to step into the world of work. So for me, those pillars, I spoke, I said three, but I named four. <laughs> um, please take all of them because they're all equally important. Um, again, it's consistency, it's perseverance, networking, and um, uh, lifelong learning, education, yeah. which will then guide you and lead you to, to, to the next step. Especially now, yeah, we mentioned AI and it's just terrifying everyone on the show <laughs> earlier today, but you're gonna have to keep learning to be able to yeah, utilize the, the tools around you. Learning. I get that. And it's so funny, as you say that, I'm thinking about just about every entrepreneur or, or person who's achieved anything remarkable. I ask them about failure and they almost don't understand the question because mm. they fail five to 20 times yeah. a day. And if they're not failing, they know they're not going in the right direction. You've yeah. got to fail to be able yeah. to learn like that. It's Perseverance. Um, I love that. Where, where do you want to go with this? Now that you've started to get this kind of traction mm. when you can see the results yeah. playing out in the real world like this where would you like to see you as an organization mm. empower youth go I think um, there's a few things that I can speak to and I think the first one is um, partnerships and collaborations we've definitely looking to grow and establish more sustainable ones um, in the terms of uh, you know uh, you know an entity coming in and partnering us for like three to five year um, you know agreement where we, we're working on developing youth across the country um, it, we also are looking to then become a global uh, authority when it comes to the space of young people yes. so you know we've done seven of our nine provinces we're targeting the other two which is Western Cape and Free State only by the end of 2024 moving into a continental space and then then into a global space and really getting to a point where we're able to do a skills transfer with other countries For we're able sure. to do a talent transfer where you know there's a certain number of youth um, from power youth that will go over into a China for example yeah. and you know we get a number of young people from China that will come through to South Africa um, just to create a skills balance in terms of where we're lacking and where they could possibly be lacking uh, we're also looking to um, you know make sure that we're becoming uh, you know an advocate as well as um, a, a sort of a contributor to policies around young people where we're able to contribute to policies that speak to youth empowerment specifically that give a mandate for all private and public sector um, workable, entities yeah. to, 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 to engage youth opportunities. And I think that's really where we're positioning ourselves. Bother scaling up, um, becoming a global authority, um, you know, doing, uh, you know, um, contributing or influencing policies. We're really wanting, um, you know, to become an authority in the space and ensure that young people are not left behind. You've already done it. You've already <laughs> started on that journey, so there's no stopping you now. I love the fact that you speak up and you speak down Absolutely. in the same, and you speak across. <laughs> um, but most importantly, I'm feeling this baseline shift, and that's where South Africa is. They say that you will grow up as an average of the people that you grow up with. Yeah. Well, we're bringing that average way up with organizations jumping on board something like this we are making a massive massive difference empower youth.co.za if you want to find your tribe your plug-in your network your mentor i hope you're speaking on one of the panels <laughs> this i certainly uh, am uh, yes girl because uh Dulcilla is absolutely amazing at what she does if she is the representation of this organization that is all i need for my buy-in now you go and plug in as well 
Well, we have time, we're spending some time in the kitchen and the key to a good Detroit style focaccia is crispy, cheesy edges and fresh ingredients. And we are joined by the one and only Jenny Morris who's gonna take us through the steps to creating this focaccia topped with pepperoni, some tomato sauce, cherry tomatoes, fresh herbs and tons and tons of cheese where every single last bite is simply delicious. Jenny, it's great to be in the kitchen with you. Firstly, why is this called a Detroit style focaccia? I actually have no idea. Okay. Are we going to call it an espresso style? Okay. Focaccia? We're going for espresso. Jenny. Yes. So I want to get started. You don't even have to make the dough, you can buy it. Oh, that's so my nice kind of cooking. Easy. Yeah. So give me your hands like this. We're going to do a little symphonic thing. And get your, I want you to go, da, 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 go like I want holes in this. So you need holes yes, in this? Yes, Even if they stick to my fingers? Oh, that doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going to sing, should I sing? Like a little bit no, of a keep queen going. Keep symphony. Going. Keep going, yes. Why do we have to make the holes? Because I want to trap this glorious, look at this. Oh, you want to get beautiful the beautiful olive, olive oil, oil in. Oh, I want it in all those little holes. Okay. Maybe Detroit because it's got holes in it, don't they? Shoot things up in <laughs> Well, Detroit. I can understand Chicago style pizzas <laughs> because of the base, it's nice and thick, or no. even like cooked in the pan. Okay, we need to we need to find out why this is Detroit style. I don't think it's got anything to do with the holes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so I'm gonna spread this lovely, lovely, lovely tomato sauce. Once again, you don't have to, to make it. You can, you get bottled stuff that's really, really good, you know. Your pizza base, your pizza sauce. Mm. Even just a little bit of plain good old tomato sauce out oh, of the yes. container. It's like we're making a pizza. It's, it's, for me, this is very, <laughs> very, very, very similar to a pizza. And do you like garlic? Darling? Love garlic. Antibacterial, antibiotic, and antisocial. Who cares? Antisocial. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I'm going to do a lot. Go for it. We love garlic. It's, absolutely love. We're going into but winter. But it has to be fresh garlic. Oh gosh, absolutely. Don't you even go near that bucket. Put your head in the bucket, baby. I'm now not the bucket, go to... the bucket garlic really, that's where people get garlic breath the oh next gosh, day. Oh yeah, I'm not even going to go on about that stuff. I love how you're just adding all of these ingredients. So it really is that easy, free yes. flowing. It's, we are basically making a pizza on a focaccia. Yes, absolutely, look at that. Okay. And I'm sure you like this. This has got lovely paprika in it. It's a nice mm, spicy a pepperoni. You can use chorizo if you want to. That's for me. I mean, I'm piece, no, I won't give you any. I'm greedy. And then, of course, you can use any cheese you want. You could put mozzarella. This is a beautiful white cheddar. Mm. And um, I'm going to just take your eyes to one I've made for you. Have a look at that, baby. Okay, okay. It's so beautiful. this just goes in the oven. And you're left minutes. with... We Boom. should actually call it a pizza focaccia. A pizza focaccia. Well, there we go, darling. Nothing to do with Detroit. Focaccia. Is that how? To, is that the correct way to pronounce it? A focaccia. I'm a not going to say. Focaccia. <laughs> focaccia. <laughs> focaccia. I have focaccia. another name for it. Okay, but we won't, <laughs> say, we won't it. say that. It can be very tongue twisty and inappropriate for TV. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, so we simply cut that up and it's ready to be served. Add a bit of fresh basil to it, and it Beautiful. really is an easy recipe to throw together, serve and enjoy. Exactly, this will serve four people or two very greedy, hungry ones. Okay, like and then us. how long would this need to go in the oven for? 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Just to get, because the dough's nice and thin. You want a nice crispy base. Mm. Uh -huh. So, we've got one that's made if you want to take a bite. Okay, I will take a bite. Do you want to take a bite with me? Mm. I've still got dough on my hands. I'll just Choose grab this one here on the there end, we go. Jenny. Oh. I'll grab this one. Look at that. We're going to go in for a big bite. We're going for a nice big bite. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to wait for the hot one to come mm. out. Yeah, I'm happy. Very good. I love the base. Yes. The focaccia has got yes. some, some, some volume and density to it. And that lovely cheese. Mm, the cheese is definitely coming yes. through. Oh, well, if you want to get your hands yes. on this incredible Detroit-style focaccia that we've made, it is available on our website, expressoshow.com. You can get the ingredients, you can get the steps to making it, and of course, you can go ahead and make it for yourself. Yum. <laughs> All right, so before you go and try your focaccia tongue twisters um, off TV, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We're all, uh, gonna return with the news and obviously some sporting um, highlights from the weekend, but then it's a big one. Save seven, I want you to remember that. When it comes to organ donation, there is something that needs to shift here, and we're gonna introduce you to some beautiful young minds who might be holding the key. Cannot wait for that. Then if you are wanting to unlock a whole new world of possibilities through Tropica Island of Treasure, 
by submitting your audition video to be joining the celebs on the island. We've got some great tips for you. It's an opportunity to change your life. Embrace it. We'll see you now. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beauties. One hour done and dusted, two hours left to, to savor. Got some inspirational content coming your way in just a moment right now. Let's catch up on all of the weekend sporting and news highlights. Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with your national headlines. The South African Health Products Regulatory Authority, SAPRA, has recalled two batches of Benelin pediatric syrup. This after it received a report from the Nigeria National Agency for Food and Drug Control regarding the detection of high levels of diethylene gl glycol in the batch of the syrup. The glycol is toxic to humans when consumed and can prove fatal. Toxic effects include ab abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, inability to pass urine, headaches and acute kidney injury, which may lead to death. Sapra has said the public shouldn't panic as the matter's being handled with priority. And the trial of the multi-million rand asbestos roof removal scandal starts in the Free State High Court today. 18 accused of facing more than 70 counts of corruption and money laundering. This relates to the alleged irregular awarding of 255 million rand asbestos roof removal contract in the Free State in October 2014. The accused include former Premier of the Free State, Ace Mahashule, and businessman Edwin Sodi. The state alleges that between June 2015 and January 2016, Mahashule either received or benefited from unlawful payments of more than 1 million rand. We now move to news beyond our own borders. The White House has warned Israel that the U.S. will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran. Over 300 drones and missiles were fired at Israel on Saturday night, which Iran said was in response to the 1st of April air strike on its consulate in Syria. About 99% of them were shot down by Israel, Israeli, U.S. and allied forces before reaching their targets. It's reported that President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to think very carefully and strategically about how his forces reply to the unprecedented dented action. And a bipartisan group of senators will introduce a bill to renew the United States' trade pact with sub-Saharan Africa ahead of its expiration next year. The bill was introduced by Senators Chris Coons, a Democrat, and James Risch, the top Republican in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. An aide to Kunz said it was a high priority to reauthorize the African Growth and Opp Opportunity Act, known as AGOA, this year. The bill would renew AGOA for 16 years to the year 2041 and help countries implement str strategies to take advantage of the program. And researchers from the Northwest University of Potchefstroom have amazingly uncovered a new species of African bullfrog in the northeastern Namibia. And it has a very long name, but shortened in humor as Ben Betel, a pivotal figure in Namibia's wildlife management. 
This discovery marking the first new African bullfrog species in over a century and only the fourth in South southern Africa showcases distinct genetic differences including unique claw and vertebral features. And despite its formidable appearance and impressive teeth, this frog poses no threat to humans primarily preying on small birds, mice, insects and other frogs. Fortunately, its remote habitat has kept it hidden, yet its wide distribution suggests no immediate threat to its population. This finding adds to Southern Africa's diverse frog species, numbering over 173. Well, that's where I leave your headlines. Let's take another look at your sport. Well, there was a little leapfrogging when it comes to English Premier League football. In fact, a crazy weekend of re results. So let's start there. Arsenal's dreams of a Premier League title took a severe knock as Aston Villa stunned them with two late goals, securing a dramatic 2-0 victory at the Emirates. Miguel Arteta's team missing the chance to claim that top spot on the table, conceding it to Manchester City after their commanding 5-1 win against Luton Town on Saturday. And then Liverpool, of course, their pursuit of a Premier League title in Jurgen Klopp's fair well season suffered a significant setback as well with a 1-0 defeat at the hands of Crystal Palace at Anfield leaving them now in third place and we won't even touch on what happened to Spurs this weekend you can look it up but it's all going to go down to the wire now let's stay with European football and a big one for Bayer Leverkusen they made history by clinching their first ever Bundesliga title in their 120 year existence so their commanding 5-0 victory over Werder Bremen ended up Bayern Munich's 11-year reign at the top of German top flight. A dominant performance saw Florian Wirtz netting a hat-trick, supported by goals from Victor Boniface and Granit Xhaka, extending their unbeaten streak to an impressive 43 games across all competitions. Leverkusen's long away to triumph, not only keeping their dream of a remarkable treble alive, but also finally erases the Neverkusen name that has haunted them for so long. An incredible season. Now to an incredible athlete. Gerda Steyn has done it again. She reinforced her position as South Africa's greatest long-distance running champion by securing victory in the 2024 Two Oceans Ultra Marathon again, this time again in record-breaking style. So Steyn, who previously conquered both the Two Oceans and Comrades Marathon, completed the challenging 56-kilometer route in an astonishing time of 3 hours, 26 minutes and 54 seconds, beating, well, most of the men, surpassing her own 2023 record as well. Ms. Martin's fifth consecutive Two Oceans triumph, establishing her as the first athlete to achieve such a remarkable feat. Incredible. And on the men's side, and he did say, I'm announcing my arrival, and you will acknowledge me. Well, on Alana Konkobe, we acknowledge you. He comes from Klerkstorp. He is obviously South African, which is great. The first South African athlete to, to win the men's race since 2019. An incredible performance. Konkobe triumphing with a time of 3 hours, 9 minutes and 30 seconds, securing that top spot on the podium. Not too far in front um, of Gerda, which is mind-blowing in itself. Now let's turn to the big one on the golfing front, the Masters. And Scotty Scheffler clinched his second Masters title, triumphing in a back nine showdown to secure a four-stroke win at the famed Augusta National. So the victory now earned him a record $3.6 million prize purse after a 10th battle with Colin Morikawa, Max Homer and Sweden's Ludwig Eberg, who's certainly impressed in his major debut. And what a platform to do it. But uh, Scheffler now matching Tiger Woods became the only player to win the Masters twice while ranked at world number one. Additionally, at just 27 years old, he became the fourth youngest multiple Masters winner, joining the ranks of Woods, Jack Nicklaus and Seve Ballesteros in so doing. I'm sure those matter, but not as much as that green jacket. Incredible stuff. That's where we leave our sport for now. The roads should be waking up. Let's take a look at the traffic. Thanks, Graham. Let's start off with traffic in Pretoria. There's some congestion on the N4 westbound between Watermeyer Street and Proofplas Interchange, and that's resulting in slow-moving traffic. If you're in Johannesburg, there are roadworks taking place on the R21 southbound at Olifantsfontein Road. The right lane is closed with the back of Q at Moonlight Bridge. Traffic is slow, so please add additional travel time this morning. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather.
And we start off with some environmental news this morning is that the Govenbeke local municipality in Secunda Mpumalanga has admitted guilt to, char to charges under the National Environmental Act, including water resource pollution. The Bethel Magistrates Court imposed a fine of 200 million rand with 50 million rand suspended for five years pending no further Environmental Management Act violations. A court mandate requires the municipality to complete sewage system repairs by December 2026. The municipality's struggles stem from infrastructure challenges such as malfunctioning pump stations, impacting sewer and wastewater treatment. The Govenbeke local municipality mayor says it's not all doom and gloom, though, as they had already started to repair some of the equipment even before the court judgment. We love a beautiful sunrise view and Ishmael from Philippi is sharing this morning's. Well, if you would love to share yours, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's take a first look at your temperatures for today. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day regardless if you stay indoors. Just stick around with us. We're going to have a lot of fun this morning. In fact, we will get a little bit serious as we cast an eye forward. We're going to take a look, do a deep dive into the benefits of having our retirement sorted. What does that look like? What are the options available to us for the short term, medium and long term? We'll delve into that in just a moment. Definitely. And if you're considering being an organ donor, well, you can save many lives and we'll unpack that a little bit more. So don't go anywhere. There are stories of creators, and we're inspired by them all. We invite you to write your story with us. Your story matters. ABSA.
Now, welcome into this safe space as we have a vitally important conversation. It's time to look ahead to our futures and pave the way for a relaxing, a stress-free retirement. Doesn't that sound good? And with options such as pensions, provident funds, and a myriad of retirement annuities available, it can be a bit confusing. Deciphering the differences and selecting the right option for you and your journey can seem overwhelming. Well, I'm speaking from my own perspective, especially when you're also aiming to reap in the tax benefits, because that's a whole different layer to this conversation. Well, fortunately, we've got the right people in our corner. This morning, we will have all our questions answered and more as we welcome Cherie Kutzer, a seasoned financial planner from Alex Forbes. We bring you into TV land and you can't stop being who you are because you, it matters to you. So thank you so much for having your heart behind everything that you say here. And I love your, your company from that perspective. Uh, can I start with pension and provident? Just the difference between a pension and a provident fund as a jumping off point and why it is so important for us to think about these things, what it could potentially mean for us in the future. Thank you, Graham. There's less of a difference between pension and provident funds now than there used to be. Okay. So there was a change in legislation a few years ago where the difference used to be at retirement with a provident fund, you were able to draw out 100% of your money. Okay. Whereas the pension fund, you were limited to a third. So there's now harmonization between them. So although there's a few other tweaks, etc., the difference between them now is almost immaterial. Okay, it's about matching your journey to, to what you need out of that space. Why is it so important that we have these conversations? The main reason that we are saving for retirement is, and as obvious as it might seem, it's to replace our income when we're no longer able to do so. So you're working for 40 plus years to then afterwards replace your income and you still have 30 odd years to work. Maybe even longer now, yeah. Exactly. So with the way medical um, improvements, we are all living longer and sometimes our money, there's not enough money left uh, for the, at the end of the day. And also the world is changing. So the relevance of our understanding, our knowledge, our financial acumen, all that is changing. So you need someone in your corner to mitigate the, the potential fallout as we move. But I think all of us at some point, certainly at my age, are thinking, okay, have I done enough? What can I do? It's not just those two options. When we talk about individual retirement annuities, how do they kind of play out in the ecosystem? Well, where you started with the pension and the provident funds, those two options are available to you in terms of your employment. So you don't actually have a choice with, with those. Whereas with a retirement annuity, which we commonly call an RA, those you are able to take out individually. So you are then able to either enhance your existing savings, otherwise a retirement annuity is available to people that they can take by themselves. I love that. And, and they are a wonderful range of products. And I think, you know, even the banks are getting quite competitive now. People understand that we're under a lot of pressure, but we still, despite that, we can't sacrifice long-term vision for cash flow today. We need to have these, these kind of options playing out. When we talk about having tax-free savings accounts, having all of these different options available, how do we go about finding the right balance of our kind of portfolio, if you will, when looking for that, that retirement package, that balance? I often think back to clients of mine when, when I'm helping them with their retirement, etc. And not one client ever said, I didn't save enough. Uh -huh. um, and, and it's something that you're needing to do all the time. And the retirement products, the pension, the provident, the retirement annuities, those are long-term saving vehicles. Uh, whereas the tax-free savings account, what that's able to do is cover some of your medium-term or your okay. short-term needs. How do you start that journey? What advice would you offer for someone now looking to, to get real? The starting point would be to speak to a professional. So to connect with somebody at Alex Forbes so that you are able to be guided. We do this literally every day, whether it be the long-term planning, medium-term and, and the short-term planning. So connect with someone that is able to help you to ensure that that journey to your retirement, as you started with, with those myriad of, of options, are for then sure. going to be easier. And just less daunting. Um, and you forgot to add to your list of prerequisites, you enjoy doing this every day, all day. I can see it. <laughs> we really do. And, and it's a matter of trying to ensure that connection with our individual clients so that this journey is less daunting because it's something that we have difficulty with and we need to be planning accordingly. And that's what we are there to able to assist you with. Our consistent friend to just keep us on that path. But it should be the best conversation. It should be one that inspires you to think 
think about that future, what you want, and that legacy. I absolutely love this. Thank you so much for opening a window and simplifying things that I think for many of us are quite complex um, and certainly the right person to have in our corner as well. So thank you so much for doing what you do and enjoying it as much as you do every single day. Our retirement should be about freedom, as I said, not about financial worry and anxiety. So reach out to the experts at Alex Forbes today for that first free consultation. They will start this journey for free and guide you through it. They'll help you take action so that you can have that peace of mind. Do it today. Don't wait for tomorrow. And for more information, you can um, schedule your free consultation actually right now at alexforbes.com and get a whole host of financial inspiration for your long-term, well, your short-term and medium-term journey as well. But uh, Shree, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Oh, thanks, G-Man. Well, listen, if you have always wondered how you can do more and help one another, well, we do wish that you will consider what we're about to talk about now. Now, a way to help each other that we don't talk about is through organ donation. Save7 is a registered NPO composed of over 170 passionate health science students, designers, copywriters, and transplant coordinators using AI and social media to raise awareness for organ donation and help change the transplant ecosystem in South Africa. Now, they've partnered with the likes of the Springbok Sevens, the Organ Donor Foundation and the Southern African Transplant Society. The organization is active across six medical and three non-medical campuses throughout the country. And here to chat to us about the incredible work that they do are John T. Wright, Nazim Nahdi, and Matipa Letwaba. It's so great to have you all here. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Oh, this is very exciting. I mean, John T, can you tell me a little bit more? Save Seven, what is it? Where did it start? What's the idea behind it? Of course, Zoe. So, Save Seven actually got started when we were in first year. And it starts with a woman called Lynette. So, she's our shopkeeper, but she's also a dialysis patient in our Tigerberg unit. And she told us the story about how she and her sister have been waiting for life saving organ transplants, specifically kidney transplants, for the past two years. Sure. And we were struck by this and realized in talking to some of our lecturers that there are over 60 organs that could be given to them each and every week, but aren't, purely because people haven't had the conversation about donating their organs after they die. And if they did, they would save up to seven lives, which is why we started Save Seven. Okay, okay. So, you know, it's a conversation that needs to be had and it's something that can be done and it means the waiting list doesn't have to be that long for individuals waiting for crucial right. organs. Now, how does AI play a role? Because that, for me, is very interesting. Um, so, basically, AI has transformed a medicine. It has transformed the landscape of, basically, um, healthcare service delivery as well. So, what we do at Safe 7 we basically use AI to make information about organ transplantation available in different languages so it can be accessible to all South Africans. We're doing this with the help of an AI-powered um, um, chatbot that basically can ask questions in different languages. You can facilitate communications with the person that you're reaching out to as well. Um, my department, which is basically social media we heavily um, rely on um, AI because uh, basically it incorporates a lot of an analytics and as well as uh, basically the results that we see on social media if people are engaging with us or not so um, as much as I would want to say AI is doing its work by reaching out to South Africans they, we are still living in South Africa and there's this mm. socio-economic disparities mm. you know the climate so um, safe is also working and planning to basically pilot um, um, outreach programs to the community so we can um, reach out to more even more communities and also reach the missing people on social media mm. um, and we are aware that um, social media marketing has become um, oversaturated over the past few years. And we're not really looking to compete with your content creators, your influencers, or your businesses. But we encourage them to collaborate with us to basically help us you know, share the message and help spread awareness. And I hope that the viewers at home as well can engage with Safe 7 by following us on our social media pages. We are on TikTok, uh, Facebook, and Instagram at Safe 7 Lives. Um, the 7 is in... Um, 
lids and space can, yeah. <laughs> and those spaces so yeah okay well I love that you are utilizing platforms that is available because yeah. through doing that and the hard work save seven has done I believe you've reached a, a goal or a milestone of a million donors is that correct yeah, we've reached about a million people through our social a media campaigns people. and underground campaigns. So we at all the campuses, we go around with little flyers. And if you don't catch them on uh, there, we go on social media, yeah. catch them there so we can have a wide net. <laughs> you definitely have a wide net. And I believe your next goal is to set up a life pod at Tigerberg. Tell me more about that. Sure. So, so this is our latest initiative and one that we're hoping we'll be able to get more donors now as opposed to when everybody eventually dies at some stage. And it's, it's, it's meeting a crucial need at Tigerberg because at the moment, and it's especially prevalent because of the budget cuts that we've had, we don't have enough ICU space. Okay. And the current flow means that if somebody's identified as a donor, they can save seven lives, but they need to go to theater and there's, there's a whole bunch of logistics. And that means that they have to keep an ICU bed space for 12 to 36 hours. And what that means is that the other people who need that bed, children coming with spinal injuries, other people need that ICU bed and ultimately they get prioritized. So what we're doing at Tigerberg is in partnership with our lecturers, we've managed to find a room and said that what if we, what if we renovated this and what if we made this a specific holding area for donors? Mm -hmm. We can move them there, we can care for them before they go to surgery and afterwards. We can save seven lives and we can also open up that ICU space for the other people to come in. Okay. And it's really a win-win. Yes, it is. And I love that you're calling it a life pod. Yes. It is really, really <laughs> special. Yeah. Now, I, I like to believe I am an organ donor. I'm pretty sure I filled in the box and ticked the boxes. But how can people make sure they are organ donors? So that, And why is it so important for them to have these types of conversations with their loved ones? Mm. Mm. So that's actually the easiest part of this whole thing. All you need to do under South African law is talk to your next of kin. So that's your mother, your partner, your brother, your sister, your friend, and if you're really close to them, and say, listen, after I pass on, I want to carry on my legacy. I want to save seven people. And that's all it really takes. There's no contracts that you need to sign, no documents that need to go in. We encourage people to sign up on our website just as a declaration of intent. To say, no, listen, I do want to do this, so that after you pass on, we can tell your next of kin that um, you did, but ultimately it's your decision and your next of kin's decision. That's why we have the chatbot in all the languages, so that people are equipped to have this conversation, because that's all you need to do. That's okay, so next of kin, <laughs> in the event you pass, has the final say with, yes. and, and of course, it's important for them to know that you, that's part of your wishes, is to become an organ donor. Exactly. Well, I think what you are doing is absolutely incredible. How else can we contribute to Save Seven? So, I mean, uh, starting off, you can have the conversation with your family. Like I said, that's step one. Uh, step two, you can go check out our social media and you can find information about our life pod there. And we made it really fun. So if you want to start your own campaign, you can. Mm -hmm. And for students, we've incentivized you with little rewards. You can get vouchers and things like that to start your own fundraising campaign. So you can own a piece of this campaign as well, because that's ultimately what we want. Mm -hmm. um, you can go check out our website and get some more information there. And yeah, it's, it's quite simple, actually. <laughs> oh, it really is simple. Thank you for coming forward and sharing this incredible initiative. And I'm hoping and I'm pretty sure you have reached many, many people that will now sign up to Save 7 whenever the time comes and organ donation being extremely important. Well, to the three of you, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank thank you. you for Sorry. being here. <laughs> and we all know of someone who could need an organ donation someday. So one registered organ donor can save seven lives. Now you can visit their website and social media to register and to find out how you can make a difference. Absolutely love it. We are connecting the dots this morning when it comes to empowered, powerful young South Africans. So let's continue on that train. We're going to introduce you to the Elsie's River High School Band. Look at them. Clearly no height restriction for making it into the band. You've just got to be really, really, really good looking. Now you've got to be really talented and you will understand why in just a moment we're going to chat to some of the band members and then see them perform. Stick around.
Now, joining us um, this morning to, for another incredible, dramatically talented group of young South Africans is a man who sits at the helm, Mr. Benjamin Sanderson, who is an educator and coordinator, if you will, and then two incredible learners, Tyrese Rittles and Marisha Fortain, who are also band members on the Elsie's River High School Band. Can we give them a feel-good welcome <laughs> to Expresso? See, finally, we've got a whole band here to cheer as well. Normally, it's just our cameraman who actually <laughs> tends to be a live studio audience. Guys, thank you so much for joining us this oh, morning. Thank you, thank you, pleasure. thank you. This is incredible. Mr. Benjamin, I, I know that your school has a rich cultural history, academic history, and this band. Can you tell us a little bit more about the inception of the band and the mm. impact it has had on the learners, not only in school, but also out of school? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Zoe, we started back in 2008. Uh, there was a definite need for um, a kind of a creativity for the for the kids, so we decided that um, it was a community band first, and oh, then brilliant. the school adopted the band, and that is basically where we started. So um, yeah, outside of school, um, we have professional musicians that came from the band. We have Rolin, um, that was one of our, our learners. We had Craig Lucas, oh the, the voice God. winner, and then also August West. That is a saxophonist. Sure. So, and then also Craig O'Don that finished um, in the top 16 of, of Idol. So, so we have uh, illustrious yes, yes, sure. just definitely. So, the talent is there. We we have more than enough talent. So, so this is basically just to showcase their talents. Um, Mauritia, Tyrese, Tyrese. <laughs> You sound phenomenal. We haven't even seen you do a full performance here, just snippets of um, a sound check. There is something amazing about the collaborative effort of a band, especially a big band like this. How does it feel when you start to get it right? Because I would imagine when you first start practicing together and it's all <laughs> off and no one's on the same page, when it starts to click, when you feel like you're a part of something like this, how does that feel? It feels amazing because Coming from being very shy and starting to do the band and you start to come out more out of your shell, you start expressing more, being more with others, interacting with more people, it really feels good. And especially when you get to broadcast your talent on a big stage. For sure. And, and you're here, girl. You are here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely do. I mean, do you feel like talent is enough to be part of this band or...? Um, I would say no. Uh -huh. um, because it requires, like, to, if you want to become like professional and you know um, it requires hard work and dedication I would sure. say talent it, it is not enough like you can't just depend on talent because it only takes you so far and if you really want to be the best you know um, you would incorporate our like Elsie's River High School's core values which is hard work respect and discipline I love that. And, and it's so funny you say that because I'm thinking here yeah, about the amount of incredibly famous artists we've had who are nowhere near as talented as the other half of the artists that come <laughs> through here. It's not a measure of success. It's that dedication, that fortitude, the sacrifice. These are life skills. These are some of the most important life skills you can put into a young person. How do you approach your job here? What do you see your role as? Because you're kind of parent, you're <laughs> kind of director, you're kind of brand manager, yep. you've got to work almost as a business when you start getting it right yep. to this degree. How do you see your role? Uh, look, I had a full head of hair when I started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the grey is, um, it is there somewhere. We all know grey hairs. Um, so, so, yeah, so... Look, <laughs> the planning that goes involved, people don't realise, you know, it's... it's um, uh, late nights uh, on my own, um, planning planning a show if we, if we have to do a, um, a performance, uh, for example, at the Grand West Arena. So I walk around um, putting in the lunch for the kids um, with the headphones on my on my head, <laughs> and then uh, my wife would, what, what are you listening? So by the end, when we get to the production, they all know the songs in the house already. Almost better than yeah, the band, yeah. yeah. No, so so <laughs> it, it starts quite early, and then, um, you know, we pass it over to the kids, and then we have a very helpful um, 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 team of, of educators and then also our, our coaches. So we have Ashley Lobo, which is our vocal coach. And then also we have Don Vino Prince, who oh, that wow. is also a regular oh, on your boy, show. Yeah. He, he, he gives back in the community, so when he comes out with, with the kids. So, so yeah, so what you hear now is actually one of, wow, one of his, his, his products, so, so yeah. 
that essentially you've started your career. You've, <laughs> that, but that's honestly, everything that you're talking about now, it's exactly what we would talk about with professional artists as they're launching a tour or an album. It's, you've done it. Yes. It's brilliant. I love it. Well, we know that you're performing between now and nine o'clock on Expresso, but are there any other gigs coming up or places we can come and support? Um, we actually have a little um, get together with a toe surf here coming down for rugby oh. and some other sporting events. Uh, it's in the week. Um, and then we will be performing there. And then also, at, uh, I think on the 27th of April, we have uh, table tennis, uh, um, our table tennis kids also having an event, so we'll be performing there. And then late in the, I think it's in the third term, we'll have a little talent show at school. Right. So um, everybody's welcome to come and join in. And then hopefully late in the year, we'll have our own jazz on the lawn. Um, we will also be performing. So, so it's quite a, a busy couple of months. Just language. wait after this morning's <laughs> performance that roster might get a little bit fuller. Oh. Um, I have a feeling because you guys are sounding and just the energy feels amazing within this little collective here. So we love you guys. Pros, absolute pros. <laughs> We're going to send you ladies on your way. You can go and take to the stage. Go for it. It's your moment to shine uh, because we're going to have an opportunity to see the incredible Elsie's River High School Band do what they do best, and that is just play incredible music. And they're going to perform for us right now. Um, the Good To Be Back slash The Boss Medley by Natalie Cole and the Braxtons and Officially Missing You by Tamir. Um, an incredible line up for an incredible band. Take it away.
Yes, it's got Akila Suleiman's stamp of approval, <laughs> you gorgeous girl. Um, she became famous during the COVID years. She was one of those content creators that dragged us through the hard yards, and she has gone on to achieve incredible things. And we're going to introduce, reintroduce you to this wonderful human being in just a moment. Then we're going to connect on the socials. We put it to you guys this morning. How has AI improved an aspect of your daily life? Don't be scared of AI. It's there to help. We want to find out what mark it's making in your life. We'll see you after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Now, joining us right now is Akila Suleiman. Now, she is a young content creator, a TikToker from Cape Town, and she is here to join us this morning. And for us to get to know her a little bit better, can we give her a warm Expresso welcome? We, today is one of those few days, Akila, where we have a, a studio audience. You know, mm. we've got that incredible band that's yeah, been performing. Yeah. So now when we say oh, they clap, they clap. Yes. <laughs> We absolutely love this. Now, Graham mentioned earlier before the ad break that oh. your rise to fame happened during our COVID oh. era. Tell me about that very first video you popped online and that very first video that went viral. Yeah, so the first <laughs> video I made was actually a makeup tutorial and it was lip syncing while doing the makeup. And while I was sort of practicing, after I posted the video, I realized, but I know this whole sound. Like, I can remember the whole sound. And then I just decided to go into lip syncing. And after that first video, I would say it went viral for someone that only had like 100 followers. It got over 100,000 views. Sure. And people were like, you're really good at lip syncing. And I was like, let me just continue doing that. It is a talent. It really is a talent to be able to do that. So we've got some of your videos on our screen right now. Of course, you having a lot of fun creating this content, but there's a lot of work involved in yeah. creating any piece of content. Now, after high school, you decided to, to take a gap year. How was that received in your household? So it was actually received fairly well. I told my mom, listen, um, I actually applied to university. I wasn't accepted. and. When I went into social media, my mom was like, you know, I don't know what social media is about. This is not what I grew up with. But she was like, do you? Okay. Take a gap year. If this is what you want to do, I'm not going to force you to go into something you don't want to do. 
And then I just continue with the content creation. And I mean, my mom's laughing at the videos, so she says I'm having fun. So to her, it's, it's fine, it's really fun. What would you say is the best thing that came from your gap year? I took a gap year too, so I'm all for taking a gap year if you're not sure of what yeah. you want to do after high school. What, what was the biggest lesson you've learned from your gap year? Is that you don't always have to have a plan. That's my thing. Like, you never know if the plan's going to work out. Taking a gap year was not part of my plan, but it worked out so well. I mean, look where I'm sitting today. Yes. I'm enjoying my content creation. I'm doing well in the industry. So I think it was amazing. It, it, everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah, mm. no, it did. It definitely did. Now, when it comes to the type of content you create, how would you best describe it? Because you've now evolved from mm. lip syncing. You now do other things as well. Yes. How would you describe your style of content creation? So I would say mine is more on the comical side. I love making people laugh. I love when people laugh at my content. I love when people laugh with me. So I would say it's on the comical side. And then also I dip my toes into the beauty industry. So hair and skincare. So I would say beauty and comical lip okay. syncing. Well, that's the beautiful thing about content creation. You don't have to limit what you're interested in. And if you don't know, next time you decide, oh, I'm going to take up power tools, then that's exactly. something you can embrace yeah. and share with your audience. Yeah. Now, for anyone that is watching, perhaps I'm thinking of, you know, a young teenager or a, a, someone approaching their 20s or early 20s, and they've been thinking about, you know what, maybe I should give content creation a try. How would you encourage them to, to take that leap? Listen, I would say, especially with TikTok, it's a very vast and diverse platform. So... I would literally say just make the content. Make the content. You never know, is this video going to do well? Is it going to do bad? If it does, make another one. Just do it and be consistent. Make sure the quality of your videos is on par. But I would literally say just do it. You never know, especially with TikTok. You never know. You, you never, never know, know what will be a hit, what could be potentially a miss. Exactly. But do you have any fur babies? I know you're a big animal lover. I am. So I actually have three. I have two dogs and a cat. Okay. Oh, loving to birds. Oh. Animals. If I could speak to animals for the rest of my life, that's what I would do. Do you have the animal voice that comes out when you talk to your fur babies? I do, my little babies. <laughs> No, oh, we've got them on screen right now. So yeah, talk so me through who's who. So Luna is the white Maltese poodle mix, and then Jessie is my little Vorswanky. Okay. <laughs> and your kitty cat? My cat is, I'm not sure if you guys have any videos of her, but it's a white tricolor cat. Oh, okay. See, I'm a fur mom too of two is black cats, so, oh. so I understand the, the love for animals. Mm -hmm. How often do they appear on your videos? Not very often, actually. Okay. But my cat more than my dogs. Okay. Because my cat's in the house with me, my dog's are outside. So the cat's they, she appears more on my story. Oh, <laughs> and if you could pick a spirit animal, who would you pick? You know, I think a horse. A horse? There's just something about a horse, like majestic, mm. running, wind in my hair, just free-spirited. Oh. I think that's, that's my spirit animal. A Have horse. you gone horse riding in Noortok? I haven't. Okay. I want I think, to. I think you should add that to your list. I think I'm going to. Oh. <laughs> well, Akila, it's so great having you here. You've got Thank such you great so energy much. about you, and we love that you're here. You're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I hope you know that. We still want to utilize your energy <laughs> while you're here. But amazing having Akila here on your Feel Good Breakfast show, and of course, just getting to know the bombshell behind the content. Well, of course, a bit of a bombshell that was dropped on all of our existence not so many months ago was the sudden advent, this maturation, if you will, of AI. And we put it to you guys this morning. What positive impacts of AI have you noticed in your daily life or possibly in work? How has it filtered through? And we ask you to share your voice notes, as always, 063408863 and hit us up online. So let's see what you're saying on our platforms this morning. Warren Javadi saying, definitely Magic School AI, which helps me create lessons plans within seconds a teacher's holy grail indeed here yeah, yeah. here let our teachers be creative and let ai do the lead work um, i love the fact that it's starting to filter into our day to day it's not just on the tip of the spear technology where we're seeing ai play out but in every day I, there was an ai driven um created little bedtime story that my son was able to plug into the other night it was brilliant i'm thinking there are so many opportunities so keep them coming let us know on our social media platforms drop us a voice note um, we would love to hear from you how has ai filtered into 
to your existence in a positive way. And remember, this is a safe place, so let it out of the box. We'd love to hear from you this morning. Um, and we are going to take a very quick break while you go and do that and recharge your coffee cup when we return. Um, we'll be back in the kitchen, yes, whipping up something truly delicious. We've got a creamy tomato and basil uh, pasta on the way. We've got some great auditioning tips. If you're thinking of entering Tropica Island of Treasure and want to book your spot, we have got exactly how you need to do that. Stick around. Oh, you can make my day. We're in Zanzibar for Tropica Island of Treasure. Are you... Did you just swim here from South Africa? There's an easier way to find fame and your share of a smooth million rand fortune. Simply upload your audition to social media, explain why you're a match for our celebs. Add the hashtag Tropica and tag at my Tropica and we can see you in Zanzibar. Buy a Tropica now and enter to be on the island. It's my feel-good show. Oh, welcome back. We've got a, just a moment to embrace the Elsie's River High School Band before we go into our official duties once again and bring you that 8 o'clock news. This band is incredible. You can feel the love and energy, and yes, the talent is amazing. So we're going to give the stage to them one more time. Please put your hands together for the Elsie's River High School Band. Take it away. Come on. <laughs>
Thank you so much to the Elsie's River High School Band. We absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much for coming and playing along this morning. We love exploring young, talented South Africans' world. So that's why we've invited in Akila Suleiman, who is, um, I think, an incredible content creator, but she's just so funny. <laughs> she gets it right, and it just seems to come naturally. But now we're going to put her to the test, okay? And have a little bit of fun with <laughs> the Guess the Celebrity Game, okay? Where we're going to name three facts about a celebrity, and then she's going to have to guess who it is. Zoe, are, are you feeling? Are you going to help, or are I'll you feeling help. competitive this morning? I, I feel like it's her game. Okay. So, so let's see how many she can get correct. Like I'll, I'll help you. you. Like that, you've got someone in your corner. Mm, girl. Definitely. And, Love that. Thank and, you, Zoe. <laughs> and and you should know a fair amount because you're out there, you're experiencing the world, you're plugged into the social media mm. airwaves. Something let's like see. <laughs> um, I've had a look at a few of these, and I don't know a lot of them. So oh I think you're going to. No, you'll be amazing at this. All right. So our first series of clues reads as such, and you can. Play along with us at home and just scream it out loud. These three facts. Owns seven dogs, is a supermodel, dated Devon Booker. Who is Devon? Oh, 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 oh. Come She's on. She's part of the Kardashian Kylie. family. Is it Kylie? The other one, the other one. Kendall. Yes. I, I didn't think, even know Kendall I had dogs. Think. Kendall Jenner. I dogs. would assume you're right. Well, oh, we got it. Now it does. That was nice little team <laughs> effort there. I like it, man. Um, okay, our next celeb. Likes to paint, toured with Chris Brown, youngest artist to win a Grammy. Wow, nice. youngest artist to win a Grammy. All I'm thinking is Tyler. I know. Can we <laughs> just make I'm it Tyler? Thinking. Can we just say it's Tyler? It's is not it Tyler, Tyler, I don't think. Oh, well oh, oh, done. You are kidding me. She's the youngest <laughs> ever. Bank I it. So. I love it. We'll take it. Now, uh, recently turned 27, biggest rapper in Africa. New father. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm stumped here. Yeah, I'm, mm -mm. If you know the, the hip hop scene, maybe it's mm -mm. not your vibe. Ah, should, we, should we get. Let's have a little look. See. Help us out. Do, we, do we have a. Something is. It can be a little bit nasty no. at times. <laughs> he's I think that's in his name. Nasty C. Yes, <laughs> that's nasty. You know what it is? <laughs> the problem is, he seems too young to be. Oh, is he a dad? A father and to have achieved as much as he has, oh. but he is massive. Oh. And he has only just gotten started. I love that. All right, uh, this is a bit broad, but let's see if you can get it. Entrepreneur, based in Cape Town, dated a reality TV star. Oh, that is very broad. Do you have another clue for us? I don't. Um, <laughs> there's a certain ace up their sleeve, maybe. Or aces. Oh, I don't know. Mm -mm. I'm at a loss. <laughs> she is our queen, our incumbent queen of social oh, media. Oh, her social media company is called Ace. Yeah. Oh, Nadia. Yes. <laughs> oh, Nadia. There she is. Nadia Jack. Okay. Uh, well done. Oh. Um, and she is. She's absolutely slaying at the moment. Um, three facts. International comedian of a mixed race, friends with Kevin Hart. Mm. Yeah. Kevin I, I second her. Manoa. Second her. Very proudly so. Mm. Dun, 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 nah. dun. Look yes, at him. Yes, it is. Is there something he hasn't hosted or hasn't won over the last year? A mm. Grammy. I'm sure he'll get a Grammy <laughs> soon. It'll come. Um, she, oh, uh, I say she, TV presenter, mother of two cats, <laughs> recently got married. This is a tough one, Akila. Two mm, black cats she me has. Think. She might have dropped Could that clue a little Zoe? bit. Could it be Zoe? I'm part of this game, but Come yeah, on, I'm one of two black cats. <laughs> now you are forever. You've been immortalised. Okay, I love that. Absolutely love that. Um, here are our three cats. Uh, content creator, hilarious, loves a good manicure. Loves a good manicure. I'm looking at these Could nails. Could it be and me? Wow. <laughs> Could it be me? Could it be me? You get the full 10 points. Well done. I know some were quite obscure, but you absolutely nailed it. Very good With team Zoe effort. Um, so you've made it. You've made it. You are <laughs> part of our company. She is one of our celebrities in the show today. Now, on the money, hopefully you had a little bit of fun playing along with us at home. Um, and lovely to see the South African connection with the celebrities that are just 
owning it in their space. And we will delve a little deeper into some uh, entertainment news in just a moment. But right now, what we want to do is plug you into what's been going on locally and abroad in terms of the news. And then I'll touch on some of those sporting headlines. Thank you, Graham. It's almost 8 o'clock. Let's look at your national headlines. The Minister of Higher Education, Bladen Zimande, says the board of the National Student Aid Scheme, NASFAS, has been dissolved. This because of its inability to fulfill its basic responsibilities. At a media conference in Pretoria, Zimande explained his decision to dissolve the NASFAS board and place the aid scheme under administration. It was dissolved on Thursday after the department intervened in an attempt to improve the efficiency of the entity. Nzimande said the board had failed to carry out its basic mandate. And the SA Health Products Regulatory Authority, SAPRA, has recalled two batches of Benlin pediatric syrup. This after it received a report from the Nigerian National Agency for Food and Drug Control regarding the detection of high levels of diethylene glycol in the batch of the syrup. The glycol is toxic to humans when consumed and can prove fatal. Toxic effects include abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, inability to pass urine, headaches and acute kidney injury which may lead to death. SAPRA said the public shouldn't panic as the matter is being handled with priority. And Somali pirates have released a Bangladesh flagged vessel and its 23 member crew after a ransom was reportedly paid. The MV Abdullah was carrying coal from Mozambique to the United Arab Emirates when it was hijacked off Somalia's coast about a month ago. The pirates say they received $5 million as ransom, but this hasn't been confirmed. A spike in hijackings has been reported off Somalia's coast in recent months, and more than a dozen vessels have been targeted since late November. And the White House has warned Israel that the U.S. will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran. Over 300 drones and missiles were fired at Israel on Saturday night, which Iran said was in response to an April 1st strike on its consulate in Syria. About 99% of them were shot down by Israeli, U.S. and allied forces before reaching their targets. It's reported that President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to think very carefully and strategically about how his forces reply to the unprecedented action. And amidst Taiwan's recent earthquake aftermath, Roger, an eight-year-old Labrador, stole the spotlight as a heroic rescuer, winning hearts nationwide. Roger was once a police drug-sniffing dog, but lost his job to, due to being overly friendly. His love for fun, food and people often diverted his attention and hindered his responsiveness to his handler's instructions. But his personality and intelligence made him a much better candidate to be a rescue dog and he's proved his worth. The magnitude of 7.4 highlighted dogs such as Roger in navigating chaos for rescues. His rubble pile search and rescue skills proved vital, culminating in a heartwarming rescue near the National Park. Roger's tale proves that each dog has its day. Well, that is where we leave those morning headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport. Thank you so much. So a bit of a crazy weekend in the Premier League results-wise. So let's start there. Arsenal's dreams of a Premier League title took a severe hit yesterday as Aston Villa stunned them with two late goals, securing a dramatic 2-0 victory at the Emirates. Mikel Arteta's team missing the chance to claim that top spot on the table once again, now conceding it to Manchester City. That was after their commanding 5-1 win over Luton Town on Saturday. And meanwhile, Liverpool's pursuit of their Premier League title in Jurgen Klopp's farewell season also suffered a significant setback with a 1-0 defeat to Crystal Palace at Anfield, now leaving them in third place. Now let's stay with European football, and this is a big one for Bayer Leverkusen. They made history by clinching their first ever Bundesliga title in their 120-year existence. You can imagine what that means. Their commanding 5-0 victory over Werder Bremen, what a way to do it, ended Bayern Munich's 11-year reign at the top of German top-flight football. And a dominant performance saw Florian Wurz netting a hat-trick, supported by goals from Victor Boniface and Granit Xhaka, now extending their unbeaten streak in 20. 
impressive 43 games across all competitions. Leverkusen's long awaited triumph not only keeping their dream of a treble alive, but also erasing the Neverkusen nickname that has haunted them for so, so long. What an achievement. Now, speaking of which, she has done it again, but pretty much as we expected, Gerda Stein reinforced her position as South Africa's long-distance running champion by securing victory in the 2024 Two Oceans Ultra Marathon in record-breaking style. So Stein, who previously conquered both the Two Oceans and Comrades Marathon, double completed the challenging 56K route in an astonishing time of 3 hours, 26 minutes and 54 seconds, beating most of the men's field as well, surpassing her own 2023 record. So this Mark Stain's fifth consecutive Two Oceans triumph, now establishing her as the first athlete to achieve such a remarkable feat. Then on the men's side of the draw, he, uh, draw, he did say he would announce and we would respect and recognize, so let's do it. Uh, on Elena Konkorbe from Klaxdorp became the first South African since 2019 to claim victory. Connor Corbett triumphing with a time of three hours, nine minutes and 30 seconds, securing that top spot on the podium. Congratulations. Now, let's see who's got the green jacket on this morning. As we turn to golf and Scotty Scheffler clinching his second Masters title, triumphing in a back nine showdown to secure a four-stroke win at the famed Augusta National. So the victory earning him a record $3.6 million prize purse after a tense battle with Colin Morikawa, Max Homer and Sweden's Ludwig Eberg, who impressed in his major Debut. Scheffler, matching Tiger Woods, now became the only player to win the Masters twice while ranked at world number one. Additionally, at just 27, he became the fourth youngest multiple Masters winner as well, joining the ranks of, and get this, Woods, Jack Nicklaus, and Seve Ballesteros. Now, that's how you ensure your name gets written down in the history books. An incredible sporting weekend, but that's where we leave it. Let's uh, take one last look at the weather. Let's take a final look at your weather. The South African Weather Service has issued a yellow level 2 warning, anticipating severe thunderstorms and potential heavy downpours today. These conditions could trigger flooding, particularly on vulnerable roads, bridges and informal settlements across South southwestern parts of the northwest, the central and western areas of the Free State and the far eastern stretches of the Northern Cape. Meanwhile, a yellow level one advisory has also been issued, signaling disruptive rainfall that may cause localized flooding and property damage in selected areas along the picturesque wild coast and its neighboring interior regions. Well, we love a beautiful sunrise view, so let's take a look at this one from Amanda from False Bay saying good morning. Well, we love that. Thank you for it. If you would love to share your pick with us, our number is 063 408 8863. Here's a look at your temperatures for your Monday. So it looks like uh, the better weather tempering all the rain and craziness of the last few days. All of that is a moot point because right now you shouldn't be moving anywhere. You should just be thinking about your lucky numbers because this Monday could be one to remember when you play Daily Lotto for an estimated 460,000 Rand jackpots. But if you want to make every day feel like a payday, you actually have to play. Ah, yes, and luckily there are so many ways for you to buy your tickets, including going in-store. You can do your ticket, you can in fact pick your numbers on the nationallottery.co.za website or on the mobile app. 
Those are three ways. Then you can also purchase your ticket through your cell phone banking. That's your fourth way. Or another way is by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. And you only need one of them, eh? You don't have to go and do all of them. Just one will suffice. And all of those details will be up on the Expresso social media pages. So you've got all the time to go and check them out at your leisure. Just go and do it. Will you be... 460,000 Rand richer, courtesy of the Daily Lotto Jackpot. It could be you, but you've got to play to find out. Good luck. Oh, well, listen, we are taking a quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We've had some incredible performances from we Elsa's have. High Band, and we're going to now put them in the kitchen yeah. for a little bit of a pancake challenge. So uh -oh. that's going to be interesting. Come on, Tyrese. My buddy's on you, girl. She's got the BMT. I love it. Um, then our love, Jenny Morris, is going to be back in the kitchen, whipping up something truly scrumptious. If you need to put back into the body what the weekend's activities took out, we've got a creamy tomato and basil pasta. Uh, it's smelling amazing already. We cannot wait to come to grips with that after this. Oh, you can make my day. It's my feel Welcome back, you beauties. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier, you heard the incredible Elsie's River High School Band performing. Well, we couldn't let them come into our studio space without getting the full value of the espresso experience, which means a challenge of some kind. It could be an omelet, or maybe it's a pancake. So, Therese and Joey have been thrown under the bus by the rest of the band, I'm guessing, and you guys are going to have to go ahead to it. Now, I know you're normally on the same team, okay? But I need you to separate that. It's no love, no love no more, okay? <laughs> For the next 90 seconds, it's going down, okay? okay Can yes. either of you make pancakes? Yes. Yes, oh, wow. Uh, we've got a confident yes, yeah. Yeah, oh, that was... Always. Tarice, come on, I want to say, uh, you've got this, eh? If we're on the same team, then we know we're actually... Okay, ah, unofficially, okay. I'm on wow. your team. You're our team captain. <laughs> okay, so Zoe and, uh, and I are here for, for moral support. We will guide you. We will keep you on it. You've got to be quick, eh? Because 90 seconds goes so, so quick. It so. really does. Mm. Okay. So should we get that timer going? Are you guys ready? We yeah. are. We're oh, ready, man, Joey, you give me all kinds of confident <laughs> vibes here this morning. I'm here for that. Okay, girl, you got Let's this. Let's count them down. In three, three two... two. One. One. Start Begin. your engines. Okay. okay, a little bit of oil going in there. We did spray the pans as well, but I think safety first. Oil that pan. We've got Tyrese straight out the gates, Joey on there. And it always is very interesting to see how much batter is used in you that can use. Pancake. You can make like flapjack pancakes. You don't ah, have to go too thin. Oh. Zoe's already changing the rules. No, I'm just saying, it's a nice thick She's batter. 
the winner of these sorts of challenges because of that that very very <laughs> almost there almost there do you want to crank up the heat a little bit do you want to add some chocolate chocolate yes. i think we're winning thank you Okay, you've got about 50, 50 seconds, seconds left. left. Okay, 50 time. seconds I'll take. <gasps> okay, it's all right, you got this That's girl. It's getting a nice crust at the bottom. Just want to do the flick, the flip. I might be flipping it out of the bench. I don't think oh, I can. It's all right, well, I'll catch it. I'll be here to catch it with my mouth. Okay, nice. Oh, we Come on, Joey, you got this, boy. You got this. Sorry. It's too Okay, it's all right. It's all right. It's okay. going. Let's move okay. this back okay. a little bit We've got 25 seconds 25 left. 25 seconds. 25 seconds. We just need it to... You're just going to have to eat it raw. Wow, I like that. Yeah, I would, eh? I would do it. Oh, she's going to even go and rock another one because she cares. Because she cares go. that much. You know, the first one always flops. So I love that you're trying yes. the second yes. one. Eh? Seven, Seven, six, six five, five, four... four. Leave it, leave it off, leave it off, leave it off. You've got one complete. And hold. And hold. There we it's go. It's done. All right. I'm, I'm, I don't know how I feel about this challenge. Okay? Why? Why are you saying that? There was so that? much confidence going into this, Joey. Okay, it was like, I make 100 pancakes every day. All right, how are we feeling now? That the challenge is up. Yeah, <laughs> I thought they were going to go more for flapjacks, you know, like American style pancakes. This is a very nice thick batter. It is. A, it's a beautiful batter. So thank you so much to our, our foodie team. Um, so we've got two. Okay, Joey's using the Zoe playbook here, where you distract, okay, with a nice smile and some some nice words, and then you finish cooking. What are we creating here? What is this, Joey? This is a. This is chocolate. A chocolate cake. Chocolate mud pancakes. Chocolate mud pancakes. It's that's a tower. Just, it's a tower oh of gosh. chocolate joy and love is what it is. Maybe okay. I throw the oil over to a cook. Oh no no no! Don't add oil. <laughs> I love it. No, it'll keep cooking. It's just going to keep cooking. Yeah. See, that's my kind of logic. I'm going to turn my these logic. stoves off. Yeah, good we idea. Are going in for a sizzle, All right. So, yeah? so uh, on what criteria are we going to be judging these pancakes? On I think flavor. Texture? On Labor, texture, <laughs> on aesthetic. All right, so you've got, talk us through your, your pancake there, Joey. I, explain your creation to us. Um, so I went for, you know, a nice style. As you can see, the chocolate sprinkles. Can mm. you smell, smell? I smell chocolate sprinkles. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Selling it hard. Perfect is a strong word to use, Joey, is a very strong word. Tarice, talk us through your creation here. D does it have so, a name? Yes. Yeah. This little creation is called Chocolate pancake flop. So, <laughs> More like table mouth. You just took the ownership of it. <laughs> with, a, with a hint of oil for extra flavor, you know. Oh, it is. No, it's fortitude. That'll get you through the long hours of a long, hard day. 100%. I feel you. I I'm going to hand you. you a little, little, Thank little, you. little, little, little tasting I've got two, utensils. two forks. All right. Are you ready? Well, you're going to have a little yeah. taste as well. No, I'm going to go okay. here by the double folded <laughs> okay. side. You don't get to eat chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you pointed at the at the spot. Mm. That's the spot. That's that's the spot right there. Okay. Really good. Okay. <laughs> Guys, a 10 out of 10. It is a 10, out of 10. 10 out of 10. I like sweet pancakes. I would add some cinnamon and sugar to this, yeah. but really nice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Are you sure? That, that's yeah. very nice. <laughs> mm. I saw it's it. amazing. It's absolutely actually nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you ready? He's scared to try the table mountain. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 11. Oh, I knew it. Thank you. 11. You're in the wrong business. You're in the absolutely the wrong business. Yeah, well, you have breakfast now, so enjoy your breakfast <laughs> for me, before your next performance. Mm, it's, it's yes. the, it's, for me, the key here is the flavor of the oil. It's just so it's rich. It's overpowering. Mm, oh. It's just, oh, it just washes <laughs> over you your a, palate. I thought you had a gym session later <laughs> with all that oil. You we might. This. We might have to, we might have to. Um, so can we get a round of applause for both of our incredible pancake makers this morning? So Beautiful texture. I love the, the, the firmness of ours. It's not too oily, which for yes, me is always a plus. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go on studio appreciation here to decide our winner. Is it um, stood very bravely beside me, Tyree? So she's a winner of our pancake challenge this morning. Come on, there we go, there we go. Or oh, is our winner, Joey? Yeah.
I think Joey made more noise than anyone else, but Joey, we will give it to you. My friend, you, you delivered. We put you under pressure. Well done. Very, very good job. Can we have a round of applause for both of our expert try. pancake makers? I'm going to say stick to your day jobs, guys, because you are really, really good at that. <laughs> the story. We all start somewhere. Um, we're going to take a momentary break. We'll be back in the kitchen in just a moment. We're going to be whipping up something truly scrumptious. How does this sound? A creamy tomato and basil pasta. That sounds amazing. Oh, well, listen, we are always here for all the amazing things, including those Tropica auditions. Mm. We've seen some incredible ones, Brilliant. and perhaps you still want to get your entry in. Well, let's take a look. Are you auditioning and getting ready for Tropica Island of Treasure? Well, don't let joint and muscular pain hold you back. Deep Eat is your go-to warm-up solution and SA's number one choice. Oh, yes, and here's an extra incentive. The top seven contestants heading to the island will each receive 10,000 Rand from Deep Eat. And remember, you can upload your audition with the hashtag Deep Eat and the hashtag Tropica and tag MyTropica. Who knows? You could be competing in Zanzibar. Yeah, it's time to reach your full potential. Get Deep Eat and conquer the island. So if you, oh man, and we, we love the fact that we have this opportunity now to go and do something absolutely crazy because we've seen what a difference this will make in the lives of the people who head to Tropica Island of Treasure. And of course, added to the wonderful prize is going to Zanzibar, which is our location. Our host this season, the incredible Zanele Potelwa, one of our own. And of course, you could be joining them on Tropica's Island of Treasure with an insane lineup of celebrities. We do. In fact, our celebrities, Umuhle Gela, Ndavi Nokeri, Nokobile Kwezi, Carl Kuchelman, Bobby van Jarsveld, sure. Chad Jones, and Hungani Nklovu. Those are the celebs heading to the island. And if you want to join one of them, simply upload your audition video telling the Tropica team why you should go to the island and use our, you use social media as the platform to submit those entries. Now you can use my Tropica and that hashtag hashtag Tropica. Now you can also send your audition through to tropicaauditions at gmail.com or upload it to the link that's found on them at My Tropica social media pages. Mm -hmm. So you've got no excuses, but I would recommend put yourself on the social media platform. Put yourself out there with a process that is as smooth as this. You have got nothing standing in your way and you can do everything in your power to stand out. So let's give you some tips on how you can do that. Well, I think for me, it's just show your true personality coming for through. Sure. If you are going to be doing a little bit of a video and if you're quirky, bring that quirky side out because that's the thing that's going to set you apart when you are on that island. Oh, completely. Be authentic. And we've spoken about this because when the chips are down, if you are kind of putting yourself out there or a version of yourself, when things start to fall apart, the real personality comes out. So make sure that you give an honest, authentic representation of yourself. Show some flexibility Definitely. because things change. You get thrown curveballs. You need to be able to pick yourself back up. But I think most importantly, give us some TV-worthy stories. Give us a reason why you need to be put on TV, man. Tell your story. But also remember, this is a challenge. You're going to be on an island. There's going to yeah. be fitness components. So show your versatility. Mental. Show your, your different abilities all in your video. Completely. Yeah. It's your chance to literally change your life forever never mind just the half a million rand but you'll be out there on a different level and remember as an added bonus the seven lucky contestants chosen to head to Tropica's island of treasure you guys each receive 10,000 rand before even getting to Zanzibar and that's courtesy of deep heat these auditions are going to close on the 5th of May with a clock is ticking already so get posting for your chance to win your half of one million rand now that is smooth and of course t's and c's do apply oh well we are going to take a quick break when we get back we still have akila with us and we're going to take a look at some some entertainment news mm. of what celebs have been up to over the weekend mm, a couple of trigger warnings there as well some heavy content to touch on in that then we'll be back in the kitchen whipping up a creamy tomato and basil pasta with our jenny morris um and doesn't look that look scrumptious. It does look scrumptious. Oh, it really does. Breakfast is served in just a moment.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Uh, welcome back. If you love creamy dishes, but they don't love you back because you're suffering from lactose intolerance, I know I can make light of it, but it is a real thing. Don't worry, we got you. Today we are making a classic creamy tomato and basil pasta using our secret ingredient, clover, no lac, lactose-free milk, which is amazing to ensure that this dish tastes amazing and leaves you feeling good. Jenny Morris. Are you ready, my friend? Are you ready? It's not if I'm ready. Are Am you ready? Am I ready? I was born ready. I was born I'm ready for ever this. I'm ready. Okay. I know, my dear. So I, I love cooking with you. I know we've made an amazing bread already this morning. The focaccia was off the charts. Uh -huh. um, there is something about the weather changing like this where we want the comfort food. We start leaning towards creamier pastas, things that offer us a bit more kind of um, backbone, yes. um, a bit more warmth, um, a lot of nutrients, um, but you've got to get the flavors right when you're doing something like this. And I love the fact that we've got something that's not going to be too hard on the not tummy. Hard, not mm. hard on the tummy and you, you hit the nail on the head, the flavor. But one thing's because you can't have lactose, you can't have those lovely creamy you've sauces. You've got to sacrifice that. Yeah. No, sacrifice, baby. And not I want you to chance. stir that. Okay. And then I'm going to come into my pan. What I've got is, um, this is a, also lactose-free butter. It's a oh, plant wow. butter. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, so this whole thing. So while you're stirring there, okay. I'm going to make what you call a roux. A roux. A okay. roux. I'm going to Mauritius soon. Oh, really? Yes, I'm going to be talking French when I come back. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> Is it for fun? Is it for work? A bit of both? Well, maybe it could be a honeymoon. I'm talking <laughs> rubbish. Don't what? say that. No, you know, no, 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 no. We no. manifest on this show. Eh? No, no, be no, careful. No. Be careful. She's going to practice. No, I'm going to you, have fun. You're just going I'm to working. get your groove back, no, I'm going to do a little bit of work as well. Oh, that is lovely. Okay, Gigi, you... Put that into there okay, gently. Okay, so we've got tomatoes. What, what were we frying our onions in? Just the... a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Olive oil. So once again, you know, it just fits in with this beautiful no mm. And olive oil is amazing. It's got uh, anti-inflammatory properties. There oh, are so many so good. new things being discovered about olive oil on the daily. That's some for you. Thank you. And more for me, and some for you, and more for me. <laughs> you want some pepper? Uh, you know, all of these things of, of, of cooking being an exact science just go right out the window. Only when you're baking. You. <laughs> Only when you're baking, baby. There yeah. we go. So I'm going to give you some, you can use if you want to, vegetarian. Okay. Stock, nice. You know. Now have a look at my roux. Um, this is going to be the perfect NOLAC um, lovely creamy sauce because all the starch bubbles have burst. Okay. So it's not going to have that flowery taste. Oh, wow. I've been okay. drinking this in tea and I'm most amazed that yeah. it actually is. Now come multitask. Stir okay, for me. Okay, and I'm stir. stirring this for you, okay? Oh, yes, stir it. We can do it. Stir. Ooh, it Listen, they're not as big as they used to be, but uh, so nah. this roux, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a dough. It, it well, really, for now. Yeah, when it starts out, it's yeah. quite thick. Here we go. Here we go. Thank it's you. It's important to, to, as I say, to get those little starch bubbles. And I want a thick sauce here because I want it to like really coat. Just look at this. And it must, like it must bond. And we're using a beautiful uh, a kind of penne-esque pasta or yes. little tubes there. Um, I love that for a pasta like, I mean, for a sauce like that, yes. where you're gonna, it can go into Absolutely. nooks and crannies and be absorbed and really get coat that pasta. Get yes. stuck in the tubes. That's what you need. You know, what I'm doing here is I always make double the sauce because I like to make double the pasta. Uh -huh. Of course, this also freezes very well, by the way. It makes nice lunchbox treats. Oh, for sure. So yes. if you're going to the effort, just do it. And then you've yes. got yourself a meal prep. I love there that. There we go. Now, have a look at this. We're going to just Ooh, beat that out. and it's starting to nice break and down. Creamy. Okay. Oh, it's creamy. Okay. Really, really nice and creamy. I'm going to give it a little taste. And that's like five years at a French mm. cooking school, just condensed into you, three, three minutes. I love it. Taste that. my sauce while yours cooks. Okay. It, you can't taste the difference. It's absolutely divine. Cauliflower and it's cheese. Creamy, I was going to say, creamy. wow. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to heat sure, the that's pasta incredible. in your tomato sauce. Give it a okay. stir. And we have cooked the pasta already. Yes, it's already cooked. Okay. You can use shells, you can use anything you want. I've started really uh, doing that with my pasta, like doing it really al dente and then yes. finishing it off in the pasta sauce. It's lovely. That just seems to, for me, really get the... And look the... what I'm going to do here. Look, just look at my sauce, people. Oh, wow. Does that not say, eat me, mummy? Come, get in my belly. Uh, right, stir, stir. Wow. Okay, that's really simple, Jen. It's divine. And look here. Oh, ho, ho. and that's just going to thicken and get more and more, yes. as Mr. Wasty would say, unctuous. It's very unctuous. It's so very this is unctuous. It's my little cauliflower without cheese. I know, that's so clever. No, I, I love that. Classy. So, if you are 
struggling with a lactose intolerance. There are options. I love the fact that you can really push the boat out from mm. a culinary sense now. Um, and obviously our clover no lac milk is lactose free. It'll give you all the dairy goodness and enjoyment that you want and deserve, just free from all the horrible side effects. And if you experience it, you know what I'm talking about. And then added to that, Clover's no lac, uh, lactose free milk got a brand new look. So make sure that you find it on the shelves. It does look a little bit different, but it still stands out. And of course you can see the no lac there. Um, absolutely delicious now. The basil comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And hold. I love it. Just look at this. Look at that. Oh, <gasps> beautiful. Now I'm, I'm thinking of what else can we put cheese with? You can put, what, what you don't need. <laughs> oh, I mean, put, hey, you, you put, put sauce you with, put yeah. spinach with this. Oh. And I mean, you, you get lactose-free cheese. This um, is pancakes. incredible. <gasps> pancakes with spinach. Mm. And chicken and mushrooms. Oh, no, like I love you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and <laughs> this does. coming from you, because I know you're the queen of comfort food <laughs> I'm as full well. Of nonsense. Um, and there is something about the, this kind of texture that just speaks to this time mm -hmm. of the year. It's warm, it's comforting. Mm -hmm. There's going to be none of that left yummy, by the time yummy. we finish this. I love it. But this has come together beautifully. Do yourself a favor, get some Clover No Lack lactose free milk so that you can enjoy all of your favorite creamy dishes. Again, just like this tomato and basil pasta. And you can get the full recipe as easy and simple as it is at expressoshow.com. Oh, thanks, Jen. This is an absolute mm. win. Look yeah, at that. Nicely. You had one taste of Yay. It needs salt. <laughs> say goodbye to nausea and cramps and say hello to delicious freedom with Nolax range of lactose-free milk and yogurt. Be free with lactose-free. Oh, well, listen, we still have Elsie's River High School Band with us in studio and they're gracing us with another performance. Here they are with Tevin Campbell's Can We Talk? Take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joey Delivers. Uh, his singing's even better than his pancake making skills. <laughs> oh, we love it. Thank you so much to the Elsie's River High School Band for entertaining us this morning. And speaking of 
entertaining. Akilah's uh, offered to stick around to help us get through our entertainment news. Yes, and we are definitely ready to get through some of what the celebs got up to over the weekend. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh, you can make my day. There are stories of dreamers, and we're inspired by them all. We invite you to write your story with us. Your story matters. Absa. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And it's time for us to dive into the world of entertainment news and to also catch up with our favorite celebrities and what's been happening this past week. Akila Suleiman is still with us as we unpack a little bit about what's been happening in the world of entertainment news. And, and this is a bit of a, a heavy hitter, a interesting story. Yeah, time. it is a trigger. So we have TV personality Caitlyn Jenner who celebrated O.J. Simpson's death by tweeting good riddance in response to the football star's passing at the age of 76 and marking 30 years after his very famous trial of the century that tore the Kardashian family apart. Now, to give you some context, mm. after O.J.'s ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and Kris Jenner's best friend at the time, who was then married to Bruce Jenner, who is now Caitlyn Jenner, so it becomes very messy, mm. but she was brutally murdered with Ron Goldman in Los Angeles in June. 1994 you can understand Akila how do you feel when you because you were probably way too young if you were even around at that stage yeah. in the 90s I can remember as a young man that trial playing out and thinking it was like Hollywood like it, it was impossible that this could all be true or this mm -hmm. and then you fast forward and it's still there when we talk about the the trial of the century it's still but the fact that the, the Kardashians' journey from that time to now, that they are still so famous, that these threads have all come together like that, it's crazy that you can see an international celebrity celebrating another person's death. death on... How do you wrap your head around this, not having a huge amount of context to the actual trial and, and OJ himself? Look, I don't even know what's going on. I have no idea what's happening in the situation. It's not my area of expertise, but I think... It's on it's social crazy. media, just yeah. out in the open. I, I think, uh, yeah, for anyone that has a big social media following, I think when you make statements like that, it will come with backlash. Yeah. It and will yeah. come with backlash. Yeah. Completely, and it's not a lot. So if you, wanna, if you want your day to become interesting, go and look at some of the threads. Even Donald Trump's mm. response on the opposite end of that spectrum. It just paints a very dark picture mm -hmm. about where the world is right now from that perspective. Uh, now, not always do the trolls um, ha hold sway or have their way, as is the case right now. Actor and playwright, one of our greats, Celo Marke Kukube and his wife Pearl, they have finally addressed all all the rumors made by social media trolls about their marriage. So in her recent post, Pearl shared how she wished people would just give her husband a break and praise him for what he has done for her. And we quote, I will forever love you and your spirit shall and will remain unshaken. You are a good man, father, son and sibling. More than anything, you have been a beautiful and wonderful husband and she continued to defend her husband following the rumors of divorce and him being allegedly dropped by a very big brand it's terrifying to know that every element of your life 
can play out in social media. If I think of what I, how hard I, I strive to try and have privacy within my marriage and my family, mm. to think that you have got to, as a partner, go onto a social platform to address things that should be... Personal. Personal. Mm. But I suppose you've got to applaud her for putting her hand up and yeah. standing by her man yeah. in this case. Oh, Akila, as a content creator, do you sometimes feel like I'm sharing too much of my life or actually I'm sharing just the right amount? You have a rule, yeah. All the time. Yeah. At the moment, I'm actually going through, I think I'm sharing a bit too much, so I'm trying to backtrack a bit. Okay. Um, but I mean, I love sharing okay. things about myself and people love seeing that. Like, they want to know who I am. So I think I do share just the right amount. Just the And right. when I feel I'm going over, I just... And, and how do you know? Bit. Like, do, do is it... Do you feel unsafe? Do you feel, is there a gut check moment where you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I said that? Or how do, how do those warning signs kind of exhibit for you? I don't actually have any moments where I feel unsafe. Um, I do normally pay very close attention to what I do say on social media, so I always have that. I'm not, yeah. You've got to be, <laughs> you ultimately have to be the last line of defense. You yeah, have to, yeah, because exactly. no one else is going to step in, yeah. yeah. Well, we have some more local news to report on. So during the third anniversary of Anele Tembe's passing, an upcoming book about her and AKA's tragic love story was leaked on social media. Author Melinda Ferguson has confirmed that her book titled When Love Kills, The Tragic Tale of AKA and Anele will hit shelves this week. Very interesting. Yeah, I just feels too soon mm. to be taking the family and taking people who are so close to that into that space if something is being written as a journey of healing as mm. as an understanding of that dynamic i can get that but just to capitalize on the yeah. sensational kind of value of a story um i still I can't believe it's been three years since so passing that in itself is is a little bit crazy but yeah i think i would watch that space watch that space now, our graduates from Wits University, lots to sing about. Back in 2020, music producer and DJ Cleo shared with his fans on X that, I think it was still Twitter back then, uh, he was embarking on a studying journey. Now, in recent posts, he was beaming with pride, understandably, after graduating from the University of Vitvatas Rand, looking very un DJ Cleo like. Aww. Or maybe that's his new garb that he's gonna have to put on. But congratulations, buddy. I know that comes as no mean feat. So well, well done. We love that kind of story. We definitely love those feel good stories. Akila, for you, how important is it to, to find those feel good stories on your timeline and to follow the types of accounts that, yeah. that share the positive and the good in the world? I think it's very important. Like, I really hope that I'm giving of that positive vibe I mean you literally just need to see some positive video someone telling you you can get through the day to get through the day yeah so I've, I feel like it's very important it really is so we love that story of DJ Cleo well done well that is it from our entertainment news desk for today but the conversation it doesn't have to end here our social media platforms they are always open for you so feel free to always keep us up to date on the social streets and you can follow us at Expresso Show now, let's see if we can make your day even better. Maybe the best day of the year or your life, potentially. This Monday could be that day if you play Daily Lotto for an estimated 460,000 rand jackpot today. And it's going to feel like a payday every day, well, at least for the rest of the year. Mm. Mm. Well, luckily, there are many ways for you to buy your tickets, including going in-store on the nationallottery.co.za website, the mobile app, app, or you can simply purchase through your cell phone, uh, cell phone banking or by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep those app details up on our social media pages so you've got no excuses. Go check them out and just think of the numbers. Just start dreaming because that 460,000 Rand in estimated daily lotto jackpot has got to go to someone. <laughs> Why should it not be you? Or me, maybe even. <laughs> okay, well, we are taking a quick break on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We still have Elsie's River High Band in studio, and they are standing by to make sure your Monday ends off on the best possible note.
Hi. Um, can we chat to Akila about, uh, in terms of making your mark as a content creator, in light of what we're driving with the tropical auditions and getting people to put themselves out there, can we not, seeing as we've got her here to plug into, just get her take on that? I know it's going, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, if we can do that, because, I mean, we've got her here. It's a golden opportunity while we can, yeah. If you don't mind, Akila, because with, we're driving our tropical auditions. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beauties, as we continue to revel in the incredible talent that young South Africans have. We've been loving having the Elsie's River High School Badger performing for us. We've introduced you to some incredible young sportsmen and, of course, a content creator, the form of Akela, who's been doing it for a very long time, despite still being so young. But mm -hmm. you've figured it out. Mm -hmm. um, so we thought, well, we've still got a moment to enjoy with you. We'd, we'd get that plug-in. We are driving people to go out and audition, put their videos out there for Tropica Island of Treasure in Zanzibar. It's a gateway to change your life. And I think you understand this principle that by putting yourself out there, because we have seen to 100% certainty, anyone who makes it onto that island becomes a social media influencer, whether mm. they like it or not, because <laughs> that's exactly. such a massive platform. But they've got to get through that first hurdle of putting their video out there. So we thought we'd get some advice for content creators, and I suppose it speaks to everybody, but in this case, giving the best representation of yourself and making that video look good but right. you know you want it to look pro mm. but not like you hired a production company to shoot yeah, yeah. the thing and now it suddenly <laughs> then takes us a step back mm. so um what is your advice in terms of shooting that video from a practical perspective what do you need to shoot a good video like that is a cell phone fine mm. do you need a ring light just set it up for us if you will so definitely a good quality cell phone so that you know you'll have your quality in your video I would say preferably a ring light for some lighting. You do want some, or sometimes natural lighting isn't enough. You need that extra bit of lighting. So I would definitely say a ring light or some form of lighting. A plain background, I would say also. I mean, nobody wants to watch a video with things moving yeah. at the back and all of that Unless stuff. Unless it's so part maybe, of the fun. You, you yeah, know? exactly. So maybe okay. like a plain white or plain black background or any solid color really. And then making sure you are in the center of your video at all times, not swaying off to the side or half of your body is being cut off. So, yeah, that's some of the main tips that and I that's, would That's do. relatively simple. It's very Just simple. get that right and you're really on a winning platform, yeah. yeah. Well, a big thing we are advocating for is for these individuals that's auditioning to be on the island and be paired with the celebrity is to show their own individuality and their own personality to come through on a video. Now, it's very easy to say to someone, oh, just be, be yourself. yourself. Just act natural. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. The thing to say to someone, like, how am I supposed to be myself? <laughs> no, that's actually, if you were going to ask me that, I was going to respond with, just be yourself. Just be but yourself. But I mean, it's so, like, what else can I say? How? Be be who you are with your friends. Be who you are with your family. Mm. Don't go into presenter mode. I think that's the yeah. best way I can unpack. Because, you know, you mm. get certain radio presenters that they speak normal to you and then all of a sudden the microphone goes on and they 
shaking okay. it down. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. talk to you all of a sudden. <laughs> I speak like this when I speak to you. So, so I think that is kind of what we refer mm. to when we say just be yourself. Um, when you get something right, like for you, the humor is something that just seems to come naturally. But I know you put a lot of planning into your content. You get the right ideas. Do you have a formula, something that you, you kind of stick within when you want to do a funny video or a, something like that? How do you get that balance right? So, with, especially with my um, comedy videos, I listen to the sound a few times before I start recording anything. And because I'm in the lip syncing part of it, um, I really listen to the sound. I try and picture how does this person look when they're saying these words? How are they pulling their faces? So I'll always try and get the facial expressions on par and obviously the lip syncing. So I'll listen to the, so or the sound a few times before I record anything. And then I'll just go ahead. Just do it, man. Just do it. Just oh. do it. And I think that speaks to this entire dynamic because they are probably... Maybe thousands of people sitting on the fence right now, not jumping. Oh, look, there we go. <laughs> I, see, this is my thing is, you look, you look amazing as a man. <laughs> you actually look Thank amazing. You. Really, Thank really you. good looking, man. I feel like um, content creation deserves a little bit more respect because I think oh, a lot of people sure. still be like, oh, man, it's not a real job. Some Always. people think that. But let's just give an individual some context as to how long it can take you to create a piece of content. Mm. From filming to editing and thinking and practicing the sounds, how long would you say, perhaps on average, a video that is maybe 20 seconds long to the individual watching it, how, many, how much time and prep went into executing those 20 seconds? I would say about maybe an hour and a half. That includes all of the editing and learning the sound, getting everything on point, the facial expressions, the words, the sounds. Um, so yeah, I would say about an hour and a half for a 20 second video. Yeah, um, that's for me personally. Um, and look, that's quite practiced as well because you've been pumping out some amazing content for a <laughs> while now. But that's the bottom line here. Don't overthink it. Don't do too much and try and squeeze too much into mm. an overproduced piece of content. We want to see you for you. So just be yourself. <laughs> we want to see what you look like when the chips are down, when maybe the, the pressure's there, when there is a lighter moment. Bearing in mind, when it comes to Tropic Island of Treasure, they're looking to put you in that island setting. So maybe you want to create a bit of that magic as well. Most importantly, if you are sitting on the fence, just do it. Just record it. Put it out there. Who knows? You could become one half a million rand richer and start developing a following just like <laughs> Akila has. Um, just be yourself. I oh, love it. <laughs> definitely. Well, Akila, thank you for joining us today. You've heard the incredible sounds from the Elsie's River High um, band. Now, we've also got some positive feedback on social media. So a let's take a love. look at what you had to say. And I'm sure the band would also love to hear this before their next performance. So we're looking on social media. Gertie says, good morning, team. I'm so happy to see our young people are so active in such a positive way. Continue with the wonderful work. God bless you. God bless your way forward. Absolutely incredible. Oh, I love it. Claudia just saying, amazing. Taylor giving all kinds of emoji action there. <laughs> she was shocked at first, but she thinks you're amazing. Deirdre saying, oh my word, hashtag express. So thanks for, don't laugh, thanks for having them on your show. They are awesome. All the best in the future for them. Oh, you are awesome, guys. Definitely. Arlene says, they're awesome. My son attended that school. And Arlene also said, oh, this is a different Arlene, um, saying, so awesome. Keep up the good work. You guys rock. Oh, I love that. Man, so much love. In fact, you've kind of overshadowed everything on the show today. I love it, man. Uh, is that Clarissa saying proudly, Cape Tonian, hashtag brilliance. Ingrid saying awesome performance. Keep it up. Lots of heart emojis. Lots of love this morning for this incredible band, the Elsie's River High School Band have blown us away. This is a high school band, guys. This is just a group of kids with an amazing teacher and some wonderful support, but they're just school kids who have put their hands up and started their own musical careers, and we can understand why the incredible mentors have jumped on board. They are going places. So let's give them one more opportunity to shine on your Feel Good Breakfast Show.
I didn't feel it when the earthquake happened But it really got me thinking Were you out drinking? Were you in the living room chilling watching television? It's been there now Think I figured out how, how to think about you without ripping my heart out And I, I know you know we know you we went down for forever and it's fine And I, I know and say hello to delicious freedom with Nolak's range of lactose-free milk and yogurt. Be free with lactose-free. Another feel-good production.